and I would be buried under. Ladies and gentlemen, may I invite you to take your seats, please? I can see unemployment at front of me. Dear colleagues, it is a quarter past 
three, uh, we say in Krakow that it is so-called academic quarter, <laughs> which used to be always the excuse for the professors who are coming very late. And it is notorious. But it shouldn't be the case of the 41st session. It is why, if I may, I'm going to open our today's afternoon session. Uh, and, uh, dear colleagues, we will now deal with the progress report on periodic reporting in all other regions. The relevant document is document 10B. As you have seen, follow-up follow activities in the five different regions, namely Asia and the Pacific, Section 1, Africa, Section 2, the Arab States, Section 3, Latin America and the Caribbean, Section 4, and Europe and North America, Section 5, are presented in this very document. Consequently, five separate decisions will have to be taken. Before giving the floor to Mr. Jink from the World Heritage Center, who will present what concerns the follow-up of the second cycle of the periodic reporting exercise for Asia and the Pacific region, I would like to inform about an error that should be corrected in the name of the site of the Philippines. I'm very sorry for that. The error is that we shall replace the title the historic town of Vigan, which should be read the historic city of Vigan. It makes a difference. Uh, and it touches just the English version of the document. So, once again, Philippines excuse for this essential error. And now, please, Mr. Feng, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Good afternoon, everyone. So the working document is in front of you. Let me begin this short introduction by recalling that in view of the Asia-Pacific region's culture and geographical diversity, as well as its physical skill, two distinct regional action plans were produced at the end of the cycle cycle of periodical reporting to address the priorities challenges and the needs identified at the regional and the sub-regional levels. One for the Pacific Action Plan, which was first developed for 2010 to 2015, and then was revised and extended in December 2015 for the period 2016-2020, thanks to a workshop organized in Suwa, Fiji, with the support of the World Heritage Fund and the Netherlands Funds in Trust. The Suwan Action Plan for Asia was adopted at the final regional meeting for the second cycle of periodical reporting in Asia in December 2011 in Suwan City in Republic of Korea. It outlines priorities for the entire Asian region and identified 21 issues that concern one or more sub-regions. One of the main outcomes of the second cycle of periodical reporting in the region is the capacity building strategy and associated programs for Asia and the Pacific, which were developed by our category two center, WETRAP in China, and adopted by the committee at the 38th session in Doha. This was supported by the World Health Center and ECROM. In this framework, WITRAP and ECROM have organized on 17 to 28th of October last year, a course on heritage impact assessment, which took place at the World Heritage property of the historical city of Vigan 
in the Philippines. Using a training of trainers approach, the organizers made sure that the message of the course could reach a broad audience. In collaboration with the center and the advisor bodies, WeTrap is also preparing a training course tailored to the specific needs for the Pacific seed countries scheduled for December this year in Fiji. This will provide state parties in the Pacific region with the basic knowledge uh, and resources and tools for the protection of both natural and cultural heritage and introduce a series of tools such as heritage and environment impact assessments. In the Pacific, the UNESCO Japan Funding Trust project, capacity building to support the conservation of world heritage sites and enhance sustainable development of local communities for small islands developing states run from 2011 to 2016 and used the convention as a tool for sustainable development to support the, uh, the strengthening of local, national, and regional capacities and promote awareness, involve local people, and enhance the sustainable conservation and management of culture and natural heritage. The project also allowed a focal point from the federal states of Micronesia to witness the inscription of Namando, the state parties, final, uh, the first inscription on the World Heritage List at the last year's session. This provides an opportunity for capacity building on the most urgent conservation issues. The first slide. Sorry. Now go back to the, yeah. In Central Asia, taking lessons learned from the critical conservation issues on the historical city of Shaksiabs in Uzbekistan, the committee may recall that on the 5th of July, during the deliberation, the di distinguished delegate of Lebanon, Professor uh, Tabet, raised the issue on using different tools and the mechanisms in the convention. And I think uh, we also record that the periodical reporting is the prime responsibility of the state party. So in this context, national workshops on the implementation of the UNESCO recommendations for the historical urban landscape, HUL, were organized at the World Heritage Properties of Samarkand, Crossroads of Cultures, and Historical City of Buhara in Uzbekistan in October 2016 and February this year, respectively. This was also in collaboration with the UNESCO office in Tashkent and supported by Netherlands Founding Trust. Next slide. In Nepal, the UNESCO Japan Founding Trust project strengthening the conservation and the management of Lubini, the birthplace of Lord Buddha, was established in 2010 to support the conservation and the management of Lubini, a property of great spiritual and architectural significance. Following the April 2016 uh, steering international steering committee. This year, this committee met again in February this year, and which was jointly organized by Nepali authorities and UNESCO. The support offered to the preparation of serial transnational nominations of the Silk Roads is a key outcome of periodical reporting in the region, and a number of activities were organized in Asia to support the nomination process. The represent, the, this represents an important step forward for international cooperation on, around world heritage in the region and now involves 15 countries who act as members of the Intergovernmental Coordinating Committee of the Silk Road's World Heritage Nomination. Following the 2016 Almaty Agreement, for the Silk Road's World Heritage nomination process. The expert meeting was organized on 13 to 15 November last year in Kiseloda in Kazakhstan and involves 45 participants. This is a group photo of the meeting and the meeting sets the way forward for the World Heritage serial and transnational nomination process 
Bofiagana Sidario Corridor of the Silk Road. Next slide. The Silk Road nomination process has now also been initiated in South Asia, enabled by the UNESCO Republic of Korea Funding Trust Project, support for the preparation of the World Heritage Serial nomination of the Silk Road in South Asia. This also resulted in the two publications, as you can see on the slides. This was the, uh, pro uh, the pro project report and also the technical report produced by the World Heritage Center in collaboration with University College of London in UK. Next slide. The UNESCO Japan Funding Trust project support to the South Asian cultural landscape initiatives was officially launched in Timbu, Bhutan on the 3rd of August 2016 by Mrs. Meshtud Rosla, director of the World Heritage Center, who was joined by representatives of Bhutanese authorities and leading experts from Japan. This project aims to support South Asian state parties, and particularly Bhutan, in understanding, conserving, and raise awareness of cultural landscapes and re reinforce regional and international cooperation. Next slide. Focusing on communities as one of the Convention's strategic objectives, the UNESCO Republic of Korea Funding Trust Project, World Heritage, Sustainable Development, and Community Involvement was established in May 2014 to address the growing interest in the integration of sustainable development aspects in the management of World Heritage. Activities have since been carried out at three World Heritage properties in Pakistan and Bangladesh to revitalize income generating crafts related to World Heritage conservation among local communities. These activities include reproduction of glazed tires, traditional wood carving, etc. The project involved not only highly skilled master craftspeople, but also young people and women who can be trained to use traditional building material and techniques. Next slide. Finally, the International Symposium, the Conservation of Brick Monuments at World Heritage Sites was held in the historical center of Ayutthaya in Thailand with the support of the Netherlands Funding Trust and organized by the World Heritage Center and UNESCO Bangkok in collaboration with the Fine Arts Department of Thailand. This symposium presented an opportunity to raise awareness and about brick sites and associated monuments in Asia, and to foster recognition of the relevant international conservation standards. It also helped to further develop technical skills amongst selected brick craftspeople and to improve operating, procedure, op operating procedures and standards for the conservation of Ayutthaya and other World Heritage sites in Thailand. Mr. Chair, dear committee members, I would like to take this opportunity to thank all the partners who helped us in implementing some of the follow-up activities as highlighted in the Asia-Pacific region. Mr. Chair, dear committee members, the draft decision 41-10B1 can be found on working document uh, on page five of the English version and page six of the uh, French version. Uh, Mr. Chair, ECROM may provide some inputs on the capacity building strategy developed for this region. Thank you. Thank you. If so, I would like to pass the floor directly to ECROM. ECROM, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Just a very brief intervention uh, to congratulate uh, WITRAP uh, for the development of a uh, regional training strategy for Asia and the Pacific based on the periodic reporting uh, exercise that was carried out during the second cycle. Um, ECROM has always believed that the periodic reporting is not just uh, a process to give us a snapshot of the state of conservation of sites in a region at a particular point in time, but more importantly, to provide us with uh, a true needs assessment in relation to those sites, 
what are the conservation needs, what are the capacity building needs, and what can we uh, as um, as the advisory bodies, as the World Heritage Center, and as the international community can do to meet those those capacity building needs. So I just wanted to take this opportunity to um, express my gratitude um, to WITREP for for carrying out that regional strategy and and actually to point out and to to suggest that in all of the other regions of the world, the various Category Two centers should also be trying to um, to develop their own regional capacity building strategies to specifically meet the needs in. Uh, the individual regions or, or, or sub-regions. Uh, thank you very much for the possibility to, to intervene. Thank you. So now I would like to open the floor for comments on this very subject. I can see that the distinguished members of the committee are exhausted. I don't care. Finland is quite hesitant. <laughs> no. If so, let me please go directly to Mr. Juma, our reporter. The reporter, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm not exalted, but I don't have any draft decision, <laughs> amendment. Yes, you are on duty, ready, as always. Thank you. Which means, ladies and gentlemen, that I would like to declare decision 41 com 10 b dot one included in section one adopted thank you thank you Jean. it means that now i would like to give the floor to mr Mukala, uh, who will present to us the follow-up activities concerning the Africa region. Sir, please, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chairperson. Um, I think the, uh, some of the achievements that uh, the dossier related to Africa that has been examined during this session, I think, speak by itself with the um, close uh, cooperation of the World Heritage Center, the African state parties, and its strategic partners have been really accomplishing in the continent. And so without being too detailed, I will uh, just highlight again uh, some of the objectives that we have been setting uh, since 2012 or 2017 for the second cycle of uh, periodic reporting, which stress in particular on the preparation of successful nomination dossier, improve state of conservation of world heritage properties by effective risk management, increase community involvement and direct economic benefit to local communities. Uh, the effective management of existing properties by recognizing, documenting and formalizing traditional management system and integrating them into existing management mechanisms. We have also uh, focused on the development, of, uh, uh, the development and implementation of strategy enabling state parties to effectively address the challenge of balancing heritage, conservation and development needs, and the establishment of and implementation of mechanisms for heritage conservation protection and conflict management. Mr. Chairperson, the worldwide success of uh, awareness raising on, the obje on these objectives has been witnessed through the celebration of the Africa World Heritage Day, which is being celebrated every year on the 5th of May, uh, and marked also with uh, statement and messages by the Director General in six language, have really seen a great mobilization within the African continent. Considerable progress also have been made in the improve improving of the state of conservation of property thanks to the extensive training and capacity building in the area of heritage, uh, uh, impact assessment, and risk preparedness. There, are, there, there has been uh, a noteworthy increase in awareness across the continent about the importance of elaborating and implementing sustainable development strategies with the full engagement of local communities owing largely to the Ngorongoro Declaration. Uh, which was uh, 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 proclaimed in 2016, uh, June 2016 in, our, in Gorongoro. 
ongoing activities in Tumbuktu, for example, demonstrated also the successful uh, integration of heritage conservation into conflict management and peaceful efforts. We have uh, also in that framework implemented uh, uh, several activities such as university program in heritage conservation which brings in the involvement of African youth and, and uh, uh, harmonizing between the education capacity building and job opportunities for the young people. We have also put in place an African resource uh, person database uh, which brings in expertise both in the field of cultural heritage as well as natural heritage. On the community part, we have uh, implemented the compact project, which is also being supplemented with uh, the cultural uh, component of, uh, of, of this program, where we're also seeing the increased involvement of uh, communities in the reuse of and conservation of cultural properties. The element on developing national uh, level indicators to demonstrate the economic and impact of, uh, on the heritage also has been pursued in particular in the region of Eastern Africa as well as Central Africa. We have also developed what we call the National Heritage Passport, which we are developing for each African countries, where we will have a clear mapping of the cultural heritage and natural heritage situation of each country, so that we can be ready in case of any uh, uh, man-made disaster or, or natural disasters. We have also guided uh, state parties in regard to uh, implementing an, uh, what we call a roadmap for the implementation of the World Heritage Convention with the establishment of national committees. Next slide, please. Some highlights of we, with the cl close cooperation of the African Development Bank, we have been able to mobilize a, a 6.5 million uh, project which will help to, uh, to, to conserve uh, uh, Lake Chad, uh, which as we all know has been, waters has been receding, and so there will be research work in that field, and nomination dossier will also be prepared in that regard. We have uh, 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 also been actively implementing the coffee project, which uh, which, is, uh, which was uh, launched in Cameroon and is covering all the three uh, 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 countries, Congo, Ercia, as well as uh, Cameroon, uh, on the three national uh, Songa, as well as uh, covering also the project in Lopo, Canada. So those are one of the two majors ones, but we have several activities that I will not really mention here. Next. In regard to the Gorongoro Declaration, it is worth really noting one particular point that it has really provided us also with a, the framework on how to bridge the gap uh, during this period of 2017 as we are ending the second cycle into the, the, the third cycle, so to 2019 as it was decided uh, uh, later this morning. So with all this uh, 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 process, those three years, the Ngorongoro Declaration and the outcome of that uh, conference is also bridging and enabling us really to implement activities that uh, I have mentioned earlier. Uh, we have uh, uh, carried out uh, over six nomination workshop, risk preparedness workshop, HIE and management training workshop throughout the continent. So all of this success and also the result that we have witnessed even during this session uh, is thanks to the close collaboration that we have been enjoying with uh, our strategic partner, in particular the Africa War Rated Fund, uh, the Ecole du Patrimoine Africain, CHEDA, and uh, also the advisory body in particular, the ICROM, who has been really active also in capacity building, as well as IUCN and ECOMOS. And we want to take this opportunity to thank all the donors, both Africans as well as uh, uh, European and, and, and Asian, in particular uh, China, which has been really contributing significantly to the, both the cons conservation and uh, capacity building within the continent. Thank you, Mr. Chairperson. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. And I would like to open the floor for comments on this very subject, if I may. Let me see. Yes, the United Republic of Tanzania. The floor is yours. Thank you very much, Chair. Don't worry, I'll be very brief. Tanzania appreciates efforts undertaken and the progress made 
by the World Heritage Center and the advisory body in collaboration with the various state parties for holding upstream process workshops, which are organized in Togo and in Kenya in 2016 and 2017, respectively, for organizing a number of meetings regarding, regarding updating of tentative lists in the state parties in South Sudan and Kenya, and as well as uh, organized workshops for capacity building for state parties in, in the initial stages of implementation of the convention. And these workshops were organized in 2017 in Equatorial Guinea, Sao Tome, and Prince Guinea-Bissau and Angola. Tanzania is pleased to note that the report is adequately detailed in terms of statistics, context, and approach. In this regard, Tanzania commend the work of the World Heritage Center and advisory bodies and requests and encourage the center and advisory bodies in a collaboration with the African World Heritage Fund to continue with coordination and implementation of the action plan in 2012-2017 for the African region. I thank you so much. Thank you. Angola, the floor is yours. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Nous avons suivi avec attention le rapport qui vient d'être présenté. Donc, nous, nous félicitons les centres pour cela. Donc, nous voyons à quel point la priorité Afrique commence à, à, à prendre donc de l'élan. Et nous pensons que les projets qui sont lancés, notamment la question du développement durable avec cette cette grande déclaration de Ngorongoro va, va prendre corps et que l'Afrique sera en même d'apporter des éléments constructifs dans ces débats. Et également le problème des renforcements de capacité. Euh, il y a des résultats notoires, mais nous pensons que le travail doit se poursuivre dans les prochains cycles de rapports périodiques afin d'avoir des experts de plus en plus préparés pour pouvoir assister les États partis à pas seulement à monter des dossiers de nomination, mais également à, à, à aider dans la gestion de ces sites sur le terrain, une fois inscrits sur la liste du patrimoine mondial. Donc nous sommes satisfaits de, de, de ces efforts qui sont faits et, et, et nous appuyons les projets de décision qui certainement va être présentés tout à l'heure. Merci. Thank you. Merci. Thank you. Yes, I do not see any more interventions. We are now invited to examine and adopt the second draft decision 41 com 10b.2 included in section 2 of document 10b you have in front of you and now I'm just asking pro forma as we used to say our dear rapporteur if there are any amendments received thank you chairman no we don't have any amendment received no no if so let me please declare draft decision 41 com 10b.2 adopted thank you mr mkala thank you very much and now i would like to invite madame al hassan to present us what all what concerns the arab states region madame the floor is yours Thank you, Mr. Chair. Bon après-midi, mesdames et messieurs. Le texte relatif à ce point de l'ordre du jour se trouve en page 11 du document euh, WHC 17 41 comme 10b au point 3. Euh, à la page 11, aussi bien dans la version française qu'anglaise. Depuis l'adoption du programme régional pour les États arabes en 2011, nous poursuivons la mise en œuvre des priorités de ce programme avec, comme vous pouvez l'imaginer, une énergie et une attention particulière accordées à la sauvegarde du patrimoine en situation de conflit armé. 
en particulier en Irak, en Libye, en Syrie et au Yémen, comme on a pu le détailler en parlant de l'état de conservation des sites. Dans ces pays, les besoins en matière de protection, de prévention, de conservation, de formation sont immenses et nécessitent une mobilisation humaine et financière sans précédent. Par conséquent, notre réponse aujourd'hui est bien en deçà de, de, des moyens dont nous disposons et c'est très important que les membres du comité le sachent. L'action en faveur du patrimoine dans les pays en conflit n'a pas été gérée à l'échelle de l'unité des États arabes ou du Centre du patrimoine mondial. Elle a été menée à l'échelle de l'UNESCO dans tous les secteurs, notamment ceux de la culture, de l'éducation, des sciences humaines et sociales et de la communication avec l'engagement de nos bureaux hors siège, avec le Centre Régional pour le Patrimoine Mondial au Bahreïn et en synergie et collaboration avec les organisations consultatives. Elle s'est organisée à plusieurs niveaux, comme vous le savez. Au niveau diplomatique et notamment euh, au Conseil de sécurité de l'ONU avec des avancées notables, au niveau des organes gouvernementaux de l'UNESCO et notamment par l'adoption de la stratégie de l'UNESCO liée au conflit, au niveau statutaire, au sein même de ce comité et de notre convention, mais aussi en synergie et en coordination quasi quotidienne avec les conventions de l'UNESCO de 1954 sur le patrimoine culturel en cas de conflit armé et de 1970 sur la lutte contre le trafic illicite, mais aussi celle de 2003 sur le patrimoine immatériel. Au niveau opérationnel, par la mise en œuvre de projets qui permettent un suivi régulier de la situation sur le terrain, car très souvent et toujours en cas de conflit, ne pouvant pas accéder euh, au site, nous faisons un travail à distance, donc une évaluation des dégâts, euh, l'évaluation rapide des dommages, la fourniture d'un soutien d'urgence au site touché, que ce soit par des formations à l'extérieur ou euh, des liens euh, quotidiens par Skype ou autre, et le renforcement des capacités donc, quand nous le pouvons. La, euh, le cinquième niveau est un travail de réflexion sur la question de la sauvegarde du patrimoine dans une perspective post-conflit et notamment sur les questions liées à la reconstruction, et, euh, comme avec l'ICROM et l'ICOMOS. Et en dernier lieu, la sensibilisation du grand public et en particulier des jeunes dans la région arabe, car ce sont eux les acteurs et le futur de cette situation, surtout en lien avec la destruction intentionnelle du patrimoine. Et ceci se fait aussi avec le soutien de la campagne Unite for Heritage, Unis pour le patrimoine, et des activités de sensibilisation avec les secteurs de sciences humaines euh, et de l'éducation, donc sur ces thèmes des jeunes et de, leur, euh, donc de, de toutes les questions identitaires ou euh, sur euh, donc le rôle du patrimoine à réunir plutôt qu'à diviser. De même, nous faisons beaucoup d'interventions dans les médias internationaux sur la situation du patrimoine culturel endommagé par les conflits. J'ai déjà eu l'occasion de vous énumérer, énumérer certaines de ces activités opérationnelles euh, quand j'ai présenté l'état de conservation des sites. Je vais donc vous éviter la répétition. Euh, L'information complète se trouve dans le document devant vous. Certaines des photos donc, de nos réunions régionales ou d'assistance technique sont euh, sur l'écran et nous avons encore une diapo qui montre euh, d'autres photos. Donc la diapo suivante, s'il vous plaît. Next slide, please. En parallèle avec ce travail, nous avons poursuivi la réalisation du programme régional de 2011 pour les États arabes. Donc, euh, malgré le, la grande pression de travail liée au conflit, nous avons toujours essayé de garder en tête que nous sommes aussi ici pour les pays qui euh, donc, euh, essayent de continuer la gestion et la protection euh, de, de manière normale, disons entre guillemets. Et nous avons poursuivi euh, autant que per, faire se peut euh, euh, sur euh, donc, notre lancée avec les pays euh, stable, heureusement. Donc ce travail a concerné le soutien au Koweït et au Maroc dans la préparation de leur liste syndicative, euh, le, du soutien au Maroc, à la Jordanie et à la Tunisie dans la réflexion et dans le renforcement des capacités pour la préparation de dossiers d'inscription, le soutien technique, la formation et le renforcement des capacités à la gestion, à la protection, à la conservation des biens euh, pour le patrimoine mondial de la Syrie, du Liban, de la Jordanie, de la Palestine et de l'Égypte, et ce par l'intermédiaire de projets opérationnels, de missions de conseil et d'assistance technique. Sur le plan de la coopération régionale, notre coopération avec l'Alexo, euh, donc euh, l'organisation arabe, euh, l'homologue de l'UNESCO, mais pour la, la région arabe, a été renforcée par des activités conjointes et une planification stratégique concrète. 
Sur l'information et la sensibilisation, donc, euh, nous avons travaillé euh, euh, sur euh, Unite for Heritage et sur, euh, donc, euh, je vous le disais, la question des jeunes dans les pays arabes, mais aussi à travers des films de sensibilisation sur euh, le patrimoine culturel, comme euh, sur la Syrie, euh, après le conflit, et avec nos collègues de la Convention sur le trafic illicite, sur les fouilles illégales et le trafic illicite en Irak et en Syrie. J'aimerais souligner à nouveau le rôle important que jouent nos partenaires dans la mise en œuvre du programme régional, en particulier euh, les organisations consultatives, le Centre régional arabe pour le euh, patrimoine mondial à Manama au Bahreïn, qui continue de fournir un appui important à notre programme régional et avec lequel nous travaillons en équipe quasi au quotidien. Nous avons vraiment l'impression d'avoir une extension de notre unité à Manama au Bahreïn et je les en remercie. Signalons aussi le soutien instrumental des bureaux hors siège de l'UNESCO à Beyrouth, Doha, Bagdad, Erbil, Ramallah, Amman et au Caire dans la mise en œuvre de la Convention et des projets opérationnels. Pour conclure, j'aimerais souligner que la région arabe aurait de très grands besoins en termes de politique et action dans le contexte du conflit armé, mais aussi dans le domaine du renforcement des capacités où l'accent devrait non pas se, faire sur le, ne, ne, se faire non pas sur des cours ponctuels, mais plutôt sur des formations solides et longues pour renforcer le cadre institutionnel des entités en charge du patrimoine. Signalons enfin que la région arabe fait face à un autre défi majeur, qui est celui de la pression urbaine et des lacunes légales et administratives qui causent une dégradation rapide et irréversible des tissus urbains dans les biens du patrimoine mondial. Donc, euh, on, ce qui se fait maintenant dans les pays arabes, c'est que les monuments sont conservés et le tissu urbain disparaît à une vitesse grand V. Cette dégradation appelle à des approches de planification et de gestion intégrées au niveau du territoire du bien, en harmonie avec la recommandation concernant les paysages urbains historiques et des objectifs de développement durable, notamment l'ODD 11.4 portant sur les villes. Le projet de décision relatif se trouve, page 14 du document, euh, dans les deux versions française et anglaise. Je vous remercie de votre attention. Merci. Thank you very much indeed. And uh, now, allow me, dear colleague, to open the floor on this subject. Kuwait is the first. Kuwait, the floor is yours. Merci beaucoup, Monsieur le Président. Euh, le Koweït euh, croit et contribue euh, à renforcer les capacités des pays de la région dans le domaine de la patrimoine mondial. Monsieur le Président, le, la patrimoine culturelle arabe se trouvait et se trouve toujours dans le cyclon, dans l'œil du cyclon, à cause des catastrophes, à cause de la destruction. Donc, euh, ma question est subdivisée en deux parties. La première question. Le premier point, est-ce qu'il est qu y a un mécanisme de, pré, de prévision visant à prendre des mesures en cas de catastrophe, des, des mesures préalables, des mesures préalables avant, le, avant le, la, la présence d'une telle catastrophe, d'une telle, telle crise Moi, je sais qu'il y a un, un observatoire dans le bureau de Beyrouth actuellement, je voudrais bien savoir est-ce qu'il y a un mécanisme qui prévoit à prendre des mesures avant le déclenchement des catastrophes et des crises. La deuxième chose, je voudrais bien savoir est-ce qu'il y, est qu y, est qu y a des échanges d'informations entre, entre le, le, centre de la, le centre de la patrie mondiale avec, avec cet observatoire qui se trouve dans le bureau de Beyrouth Merci. Thank you. Lebanon, the floor is yours. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Oui, effectivement, comme dit mon collègue du Koweït, le patrimoine dans la région arabe est effectivement dans l'œil du cyclone. Euh, ce, ce nouveau cycle de rapport périodique va malheureusement être très différent du cycle, euh, du, du cycle passé puisque euh, il s'est passé des choses extrêmement graves euh, et continue à se passer des choses extrêmement graves à, à l'échelle de l'ensemble de la région arabe. Je pense que 
On ne peut pas utiliser les mêmes procédures habituelles qu'on fait dans le cas d'un patrimoine qui bon, pose quelques problèmes, pose quelques problèmes de, de gestion, quelques problèmes de, euh, de, euh, de suivi. Non, là, c'est réellement que des, 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 des conditions tout à fait nouvelles qui se posent. Et il va falloir innover, il va falloir créer des façons nouvelles de regarder les choses, il va falloir trouver des façons euh, plus inventives, moins formelles, disons, pour euh, pouvoir réellement comprendre et, et refléter le, euh, ce qui s'est passé sur le terrain et, qu qu et quelles sont les procédures qu'il va falloir prendre à l'avenir. Euh, on ne peut pas se contenter du... C'est là où je me demande si vraiment le formulaire qui, est, qui, a été, euh, qui nous a été présenté la dernière fois sur euh, le rapport périodique tout à l'heure, si vraiment il peut s'appliquer pour la région arabe. Je pense qu'il faut trouver d'autres choses. Ce ça n'a aucun sens de remplir des cases, je veux dire. C'est vraiment tout à fait autrement. Il faut inventer de nouvelles choses. Et là, je pense qu'il faut laisser aux États partis aux organes consultatifs, aux centres, la latitude de pouvoir euh, trouver les formules, les façons de faire, les méthodes qu'il faut faire pour pouvoir réellement euh, rendre compte de l'état euh, de, euh, de, de, de conservation et des problèmes qui se posent au niveau des différents sites arabes. Merci. Merci, thank you. Now Turkey. Turkey, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. This was exactly our feelings as well. Thank you, for, uh, the distinguished uh, delegate from Lebanon. Uh, we also think that the way we, uh, we analyze uh, the state of conservation reports, particularly uh, of the properties uh, in the Arab region, it has become uh, pretty standard. We just go through the report and adopt the decision without having, um, if I may say, a proper uh, discussion, uh, innovative uh, ideas. So uh, I was wondering to just echo what my Lebanese colleague said, is it possible maybe for the center uh, to reflect on ways how we can improve the way uh, we, 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 we analyze these reports during the committee meetings. Would it be possible, for example, in the upcoming committee meetings um, uh, to have a more interactive uh, session for particularly these reports when we analyze this uh, region particularly? Um, I was wondering if uh, the uh, center could reflect on this and could come up with um, a different uh, method of working uh, on this issue. Thank you very much. Thank you. As I do not see any more interventions now, thank you for all your questions, which hopefully will be answered by Madame Al Hassan, the floor is yours. Madame. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, je vous remercie pour vos questions. Uh, concernant uh, l'intervention du Koweït uh, et uh, la question de uh, la prévention des risques, uh, la prévention des risques dans les pays arabes, um, uh, surtout en ce qui concerne ce qu'on a vu en destruction intentionnelle. Uh, euh, C'est une question vraiment liée euh, aux conditions euh, sociales, politiques, économiques des jeunes dans la région. Et euh, la radicalisation des jeunes et ce qu'on a vu comme participation des jeunes, par exemple, de Palmyre dans la destruction de leur temple avec leurs propres mains euh, à dynamiter leur propre temple à Palmyre, montre qu'il y a vraiment euh, une, un fossé énorme 
euh, entre les jeunes de la région arabe et euh, euh, voilà ce, ce, qu ce que nous sommes en train de dire ici. Donc moi je dirais que euh, peut-être la mesure principale vient de l'éducation, euh, de l'éducation la, 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 sur la tolérance, mais l'éducation sur la diversité, l'éducation sur la valeur de l'histoire, sur la contribution de euh, chaque civilisation à, à la construction donc de notre histoire commune. Et ça, c'est vraiment quelque chose qui va aux racines du problème. Après, bien sûr, les problèmes géopolitiques ne sont pas surmontables seulement par l'éducation. Par contre, d'un point de vue technique, la prévention des risques est un élément principal dans la stratégie de l'UNESCO qui a été adoptée à la conférence générale de 2015. Donc la, la gestion des risques est, est une euh, approche euh, qui euh, donc devrait être intégrante euh, de, euh, de tout travail de, de plan de gestion pour un site du patrimoine mondial. Et euh, c'est de plus en plus euh, euh, donc, euh, euh, intégré. Euh, nous avons parlé, quand euh, par exemple nous avons abordé le sujet de Damas, de la réduction des risques d'incendie en cas de bombardement de la vieille ville de Damas. Et ça, ce sont des mesures techniques techniques qui euh, sont à notre portée et euh, pour lesquelles les pays qui, qui ne sont heureusement pas aujourd'hui en conflit ou euh, euh, donc soumis à, à des situations de désastre, ce sont des mesures qu'ils peuvent prendre dès maintenant pour euh, donc réduire les risques, comme par exemple des mesures de, de protection des dépôts pour les musées, etc. Donc dans ce sens-là. Euh, concernant l'observatoire que vous avez mentionné, euh, qui, qui, est donc, euh, qui fait partie de notre projet euh, pour la Syrie euh, euh, que nous faisons à partir de notre bureau de Beyrouth, l'observatoire est une plateforme euh, sur laquelle les experts de la région, les experts internationaux qui ont travaillé sur le patrimoine syrien peuvent s'inscrire afin qu'on ait une base de données euh, sur euh, leurs euh, compétences liées à, à à, à, à des cas spécifiques, comme par exemple un historien qui a travaillé à Alep, un architecte qui a fait le relevé euh, de la citadelle, etc. Donc c'est une base de données qui permet de localiser l'expertise, la documentation euh, et donc de, de préparer les bases scientifiques pour la restauration et la reconstruction. Euh, le, le délégué du, du Liban, euh, donc M. Tabet, a euh, donc parlé de, de, de la nécessité d'être inventif, créatif dans nos approches. Je ne peux qu'être d'accord avec lui. Je trouve quand même qu'au niveau euh, de l'UNESCO, la créativité, disons, ou l'approche innovatrice a été celle de travailler au niveau du Conseil de sécurité sur des questions humanitaires et sécuritaires euh, par rapport au patrimoine. Ce, nous ne sommes pas là euh, dans un cadre d'inventivité par rapport aux questions de conservation en tant que telles, mais au moins dans l'approche qui est beaucoup plus globale et qui est beaucoup plus intégrée et qui prend en compte les, les, les questions géopolitiques et non seulement techniques. Mais en effet, l'inventivité, la créativité, c'est, euh, 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 disons, ce que nous procurent peut-être euh, les conflits, c'est-à-dire que comme on est parfois devant une espèce de table rase, on peut vraiment euh, réinventer notre présent et euh, il y a des experts syriens qui, en parlant de la reconstruction d'Alep, ont évoqué euh, euh, donc, euh, les, les mouvements modernistes dans, dans, dans l'Europe d'après-guerre et la, 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 le laboratoire d'architecture que peut offrir une ville détruite aux jeunes euh, architectes et créateurs de, de, du monde arabe. Euh, en dernier, donc, euh, concernant la proposition de la Turquie, euh, en effet, euh, euh, c'est mon souhait le plus grand qui est une session plus interactive sur les conflits, mais nous nous pouvons penser, avec euh, Madame Rossler, à, à une formule peut-être par un side event dédié ou quelque chose de, donc, qui mette euh, plus en lumière un travail euh, global de tout, tous les pays en conflit, non seulement dans les pays arabes, mais aussi en Afghanistan, RDC ou ailleurs, où les problématiques et les approches peuvent être euh, voilà, euh, disons, euh, euh, rationalisées. Je vous remercie. Merci, madame. Thank you. And now the floor goes to Dr. Resla. I would be grateful if you could kindly comment this very issue as well. Thank you. 
Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. I very much appreciate um, uh, these comments, uh, especially the one from, from Turkey, to have an interactive session. I think we can easily do that because there is this general uh, topic, for example, on heritage in Syria or heritage in Iraq, um, while the committee has to take individual decisions on each of those sites. That's the task which, of course, you have to continue to do. We had this on Monday morning with the Director General present, um, a session which was very interesting, I have to say, um, on the situation in Aleppo, showing in details um, the new technologies we can use. And I thought that was really interesting in terms of um, innovative ideas, also coming from the scientific community and from others, how we can deal with these issues. Now, also the questions um, uh, on periodic reporting in general, the questions and the points raised uh, by Mr. Tabet. Um, I think uh, under your leadership we have adopted, and we come to that later on under item uh, of the operational guidelines, but the idea was to make the periodic, reflect, uh, uh, the periodic reporting easier for the countries and less workload for the advisory bodies and, and the World Heritage Center. But I think um, a general reflection on the role of periodic reporting, um, that is, uh, is very important important, and um, uh, we definitely need um, more interaction and creative ideas of how we can better use it. You know, when we devised periodic reporting in 1998 by the General Assembly of States parties, I had never imagined one outcome, which is that really the site managers and the focal points, they enjoyed this exchange greatly. And that was for me, <laughs> telling you very directly, um, that was an outcome which was uh, actually brilliant. Um, I would also like to share some personal discussions I had with Nada on the follow-up, uh, because the two of us had to go to Palmyra, as you know. And I said to Nada, do you really think they will be capable of doing all the follow-up which is requested? For example, the, the proper boundary of the site, etc. You adopted it last night. They were capable of doing it under extremely difficult circumstances um, to provide the maps and all the details. So I have to share this with you. I didn't expect that it would work, but it worked. Thank you very much. Thank you. And now... The floor goes to Ikram. Ikram, the floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, just to say a few words uh, in regard to this, uh, the situation in this region. As you know, um, the, the situation is a very difficult one right now, and um, allowing professionals to have the, the necessary capacity and training to carry out some of the, uh, some of the short-term issues that need to be dealt with is actually a very difficult one. Um, ECROM, in collaboration with UNESCO, in, in collaboration with um, the uh, ECOMOS uh, Committee on, on Disaster Risk uh, Preparedness, has carried out a number of um, capacity building activities uh, in the region on documentation of heritage and also on first aid. I mean, what, what can be done in a, in a relatively short amount of time to help professionals to be able to go back in and deal with the specific emergency first aid measures that, that, that need to be done. So I think in the first instance, we need to, in the short term, we need to continue with those efforts. Um, but obviously also we must work uh, on the longer term training needs um, so that when the situation allows itself and people can actually go back and, and start working in a, in a, in a more uh, continued fashion um, that, um, that they have the necessary skills uh, to be able to carry out that work. We've been doing this also in, in collaboration with uh, surrounding states' parties. Some of these courses have actually taken, part, uh, taken place in, in, for example, for Syrian professionals in Lebanon, uh, for Libyan professionals in, in Tunisia. So, um, so I think this has to be a collaborative, uh, uh, collaborative effort of all of the states' parties in the region. Um, finally, ICROM would also very much like to support the suggestion by Turkey uh, to have a more interactive session on, on these at the World Heritage Committee, because I think it's difficult in some ways uh, during the state of conservation reporting to really bring out and highlight some of these issues. So if there's a, if there's a way for us to actually be able to have a more sort of roundtable discussion kind of, a, kind, of a, um, kind of a format to really bring these issues to the fore so that we can deal with them effectively, I think that would be quite useful. Th thank you very much for allowing me to take the floor. Thank you. Uh, dear colleagues, we have to examine and adopt the third draft decision for the 1.10b.2. Uh, 
three, which means that I shall ask Mr. Rapporteur concerning the possible amendments, if any. The floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We don't have any amendment on this draft decision. Thank you. Which means that I can declare decision 41 content B.3 adopted. Thank you very much, madam. Ladies and gentlemen, now I would like to invite Mr. Rossi from the World Heritage Center to present to us the part regarding the Latin America and the Arabian region. Please, sir, the floor is yours. Merci, Monsieur le Président. J'ai le plaisir de, de vous informer des activités relatives au suivi du plan d'action patrimoine mondial pour l'Amérique euh, latine et les Caraïbes 2014-2024, adopté par le Comité à, à sa 38e session. Pour une mise en œuvre efficace, le plan d'action a été articulé autour de plans sous-régionaux axés sur les besoins spécifiques de chaque sous-région. Ainsi, un plan d'action spécifique pour les Caraïbes a été adopté et lancé en novembre 2014 et un plan pour l'Amérique du Sud a été élaboré et mis en route en mai 2015, tandis qu'une réunion dédiée à l'établissement du plan d'action sous-régional pour l'Amérique centrale et le Mexique sera organisée au Mexico euh, en septembre prochain. Dans le cadre du suivi du plan d'action pour le patrimoine mondial en Amérique du Sud, un atelier international avec la participation de tous les pays de la sous-région et les pays africains lusophones, portant sur les notions fondamentales de la Convention du patrimoine mondial, a eu lieu à Rio de Janeiro, au Brésil, euh, du 3 au 7 octobre 2016. Le résultat fondamental de cette activité est l'adoption d'un programme de renforcement des capacités avec une attention particulière aux nécessités de, la forma de formation de la région. Cet atelier a été organisé par les centres régionaux de catégorie 2 pour la gestion et la formation en patrimoine mondial, Lucio Costa, en étroite coopération avec les centres du patrimoine mondial et les trois organisations consultatives de la Convention, avec notre bureau de l'UNESCO à Brasilia. Cet atelier a permis de définir un programme de renforcement des capacités pour les années à venir. Next slide. Dans le cadre du suivi du plan d'action pour le patrimoine mondial des Caraïbes, un atelier sous la Convention du patrimoine mondial a eu lieu à Port d'Espagne, Trinidad et Tobago, euh, du 1er au 2 novembre 2016. Cet atelier de renforcement des capacités, organisé par la euh, Commission nationale de Trinidad et Tobago, grâce au soutien financier du programme de participation de l'UNESCO et en collaboration avec le Centre du patrimoine mondial et les bureaux de l'UNESCO de la Havane, et de Kingston. Le séminaire a réuni quelques 60 participants de plusieurs États des Caraïbes. Toujours dans le cadre des priorités établies par les plans d'action sous-régional pour le patrimoine mondial des Caraïbes, un symposium sur patrimoine et changement climatique dans les petits États insulaires a eu lieu à Kingston du 29 au 31 mai 2017. Et organisé par le ministère de la Culture de la Jamaïque, Grâce à la contribution financière du programme de participation et en collaboration avec les bureaux de l'UNESCO de Kingston et le Centre du patrimoine mondial, cette activité a contribué à l'objectif 3 du plan d'action sous-régional des Caraïbes pour le patrimoine mondial 2015-2019, réduire l'impact du changement climatique en renforçant les capacités en matière de gestion des risques. Une soixantaine de participants, principalement originaires des pays des Caraïbes, ont bénéficié de cette activité. Next slide, please. Parmi les activités dont la mise en œuvre requiert des périodes de mise en œuvre plus longues et qui sont actuellement en cours, il y a lieu de mentionner ici un projet concernant le renforcement du système de gestion participative du Capacnian, réseau de routes andins, financé par les fonds en dépôt UNESCO Japon. Ce projet a été lancé en 2016 avec les six États parties concernés, je les rappelle Argentine, Bolivie, Chili, Colombie, Équateur et Pérou. Il a nettement progressé au cours des, des, des derniers mois et la première activité relative à la production d'un système de données pour le suivi de l'état de conservation du bien a été réalisée en Colombie pendant le premier semestre 2017. 
suivi de deux ateliers internationaux organisés en Bolivie en mai 2017 et en Équateur plus récemment en juin 2017. Une autre activité, disons, de longue durée dans les domaines de la conservation est le projet pour la préservation et la conservation de Tiwanaku et de la pyramide d'Acapana en Bolivie, financé par les fonds en dépôt UNESCO Japon et mis en œuvre euh, avec l'appui du bureau de l'UNESCO de Quito. Dans les derniers mois, des progrès ont été accomplis dans la reformulation du plan de gestion et dans l'élaboration d'un plan de conservation intégrale du bien, ainsi qu'au niveau du renforcement des capacités des communautés locales. Le projet devrait être finalisé l'année prochaine. Enfin, Monsieur le Président, je mentionnerai deux autres activités qui ont été mises en œuvre dans la sous-région encore des Caraïbes. Next slide, please. D'abord, le projet renforcement des capacités pour la conservation et la gestion du parc national Brimstone Hill Fortress, saint kitts et Nevis, mis en œuvre tout au long de l'année 2016 grâce au soutien financier du Fonds en dépôt des Pays-Bas, avec un séminaire auquel ils ont participé des représentants des pays voisins également, et une étude sur la structure architecturale et la mise en œuvre des travaux de conservation préliminaires pour remédier aux dommages euh, qui ont suivi les tremblements de terre de 2013. Ensuite, l'autre projet, améliorer les capacités dans les petites régions insulaires en développement, Grenada et Saint-Vincent et les Grenadines, portant sur les capacités en matière d'inventaire comme base indispensable à la révision des listes indicatives en vue des futurs candidats. D'autres informations sur les projets mentionnés et sur d'autres activités de suivi peuvent être trouvées, Monsieur le Président, dans le document 10B, section 4. Je vous remercie. Thank, thank you, sir. Merci. Thank you. And I would like to open the floor for comments on this very subject, if any. Jamaica wishes to take the floor. The floor is yours. Jamaica. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Jamaica takes this opportunity to thank the World Heritage Center advisory bodies for their work in Latin America and the Caribbean with respect to the objectives of the Regional Action Plan for 2014 to 2024. Uh, for example, much has been achieved through increased public awareness around world heritage, particularly amongst governments, certainly within the Caribbean, where there is growing support for world heritage. We've been feeling on the ground the impact of the Action Plan with the close to 10 major initiatives that were just referenced. Mr. Chair, I'm certain you can appreciate that significant work goes into coordinating these initiatives from developing project proposals to actual implementation. With this in mind, we believe states' parties across all the regions, because we have noted it across all the reportings, should be duly acknowledged for the extent of their involvement as part of the wider record and as such, we propose an amendment to the draft decision. In a phrase, Mr. Chair, encouragement sweetens labor. Thank you. Thank you, Madam. As, the, as I do not see any more reactions, interventions, I would like just ask our rapporteur if there are amendments. Yes, Chairman, we have amendment from distinguished delegate of Jamaica, as you can see from the screen. Not yet, but I hope that we will, it will come. get this chance. Yes. Thank you. So the paragraph one, two, three, four, five, and six of this draft decision has not been amended. We have new paragraph seven, which read, Father notes with appreciation the contribution of the state parties of Bolivia, Brazil, Colombia, Chile, Grenada, Haiti, Mexico, Peru, San Vincent, and the Grenadine, Trinada and Tobacco, San Kitts and Nevis, Jamaica, in organizing and implementing various activities during the period 2016-2017 under the Regional Action Plan for Latin America and Caribbean 2014-2024. This is what has been proposed thus. The previous paragraph seven has become now paragraph eight. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. 
Thank you. So let's go to the document. Para one accepted, para two accepted, para three accepted, para four accepted, para five accepted, para six accepted, para seven accepted as amended, para eight accepted, which means that now I can declare decision 41 content b.4 adopted thank you very much sir and i would like to invite madame anatole gabriel to present to us the part regarding europe and north america region please madame the floor is yours Merci, Monsieur le Président. Ce sera le dernier rapport de suivi sur les rapports périodiques de la région Europe et Amérique du Nord. Et ce rapport concerne la région Europe uniquement. Mon court rapport sera articulé autour de trois points. Le premier est un rappel des objectifs du plan d'action d'Helsinki adopté lors de la 39e session du Comité du patrimoine mondial en 2015 ainsi que l'enquête, une présentation de l'enquête de suivi qui a été lancée par le Centre du patrimoine mondial en octobre 2016. Un deuxième point qui sera une présentation synthétique des résultats de cette enquête de suivi pour la mise en œuvre du plan. Et un troisième point, un rappel des certaines activités au niveau régional et sous-régional qui complètent la mise en œuvre du plan d'action d'Helsinki. Diapositive numéro 1. Non, non. Merci. Donc un rappel sur ce plan d'action, il est structuré en plusieurs niveaux, en trois grandes priorités, puis en objectifs, en actions spécifiques et en cibles régionales qui sont dotées de bases de référence quantitatives. Les trois priorités du plan, vous les avez à l'écran, sont tout d'abord l'identification et la protection de la valeur universelle exceptionnelle, ensuite une gestion efficace des biens du patrimoine mondial, Troisième priorité, la nécessité d'une sensibilisation accrue à la Convention. Le plan d'action a été conçu de manière à intégrer un suivi régulier de sa mise en œuvre jusqu'à la prochaine phase de rapport périodique pour la région Europe. Et à cette fin, une plateforme d'auto-évaluation à destination des points focaux a été créée par l'Unité Europe l'année dernière. J'ai souvenir que cette plateforme d'auto-évaluation a été présentée aux membres du comité lors d'un side, side event lors de la dernière session du comité. La première enquête de suivi en ligne a été faite d'octobre à décembre 2016. Elle couvre donc les 15 mois qui se sont écoulés depuis l'adoption du plan d'action d'Helsinki. Cette enquête de suivi a deux objectifs. Le processus même de l'enquête permet de maintenir un certain niveau d'engagement, non seulement des points focaux, mais aussi du Centre du patrimoine mondial, de garder un niveau de vigilance sur la mise en œuvre de ce plan d'action entre deux grandes phases de rapport périodique. Et deuxième objectif, elle a, cette enquête de, de suivi permet de fournir des données quantitatives permettant de mesurer la mise en œuvre des différents objectifs et actions du plan d'Exinki, et éventuellement, comme vous le verrez, de réévaluer les objectifs et les bases de référence sur la base des progrès réels des États partis. Diapositive numéro 2. Alors, voici une présentation très synthétique des résultats de cette enquête. Et en tout premier lieu, je souhaite exprimer toute la gratitude du secrétariat et toute la gratitude de mon équipe à l'Unité Europe gratitude envers tous les points focaux qui ont pris le temps et la peine de répondre à cette enquête de suivi. Je rappelle également que cette enquête est disponible sur le site web du Centre du patrimoine mondial et vous avez l'adresse web au paragraphe 5, page 18 du rapport euh, sur le suivi du plan d'action d'Helsinki. 33 États partis sur 49 ont répondu à cette enquête et cela couvre 412 biens du patrimoine mondial et ce qui correspond à 83% des biens de la région Europe. 
L'enquête a fait apparaître des progrès pour 25 des 44 cibles régionales et il est apparu que pour 12 de ces 25 objectifs, les objectifs de ces euh, cibles, les objectifs ont été atteints. Certaines cibles ont également été largement dépassées, ce qui permet, comme je viens de vous le dire, de l'établissement de nouvelles lignes de référence, de nouveaux objectifs quantitatifs pour la mise en œuvre de ces actions. Un exemple pour donner un petit peu de, de corps de chair à ces euh, termes abstraits. Pour ce qui concerne euh, la priorité numéro 1 et l'action 4, qui consiste à assurer le financement de la mise à jour des analyses de lacunes dans la liste pour un ou plusieurs États partis, la cible était définie de 75 000 dollars des États-Unis pour les États partis avec deux analyses de ces lacunes. Et les résultats obtenus par l'enquête montrent un euh, montant de 115 000 dollars réunis pour trois analyses. Autre exemple de large dépassement de ces cibles régionales, pour la priorité numéro 2, donc relative à la gestion efficace, l'action 21 qui consistait à établir des systèmes de renforcement des capacités pour les gestionnaires de sites, eh bien, la, cible, la ligne de référence qui avait été définie était de 40 activités et le résultat obtenu a été 79. Voilà certains de ces euh, résultats que vous pouvez retrouver donc dans la dans la, le suivi, enfin le résultat de l'enquête qui est en ligne, euh, comme je viens de le dire. Alors, quelles sont les, les, les prix, au sein des priorités les actions qui, ont, euh, qui sont euh, reçues, en tout cas perçues comme les plus pertinentes de ce plan d'action Pour la priorité numéro 2, gestion efficace du patrimoine mondial, eh c'est l'action 15 sur l'établissement d'indicateurs de suivi et un suivi régulier qui apparaît la plus pertinente, qui montre à quel point le suivi montre qu'on veut encore du suivi <rire> et l'établissement de nouveaux indicateurs. Ensuite vient l'action 18 qui consiste à réviser et mettre à jour les plans de gestion des biens afin d'y intégrer les mécanismes du patrimoine mondial ou bien sûr à établir ces plans de gestion. Enfin, autre exemple d'action jugée la plus pertinente par les gestionnaires de sites, c'est pour la priorité numéro 1, l'action 9 qui prescrit de déterminer clairement les attributs de la valeur universelle exceptionnelle et d'en faire un des éléments clés des plans de gestion. A contrario, pour la priorité numéro 3 qui concerne la sensibilisation accrue à la Convention, L'action 27 relative au processus participatif et à l'engagement communautaire, eh l'enquête a fait apparaître que pour seulement 29% des biens, ce cadre de participation avait été formalisé et intégré au plan de gestion, alors que la ligne de référence établie par le plan d'action était de 50%. Je poursuis, Monsieur le Président, en, en détaillant, en revenant sur certaines des activités importantes organisées au cours de l'année écoulée par les États partis. Diapositive numéro 4. Bien sûr, ces activités sont détaillées dans le document qui vous est soumis et elles s'inscrivent dans le cadre des actions 21 à 24 du plan d'action d'Helsinki qui sont destinées au renforcement des compétences interdisciplinaires des gestionnaires de sites. Je cite en premier lieu la conférence nordique annuelle sur le patrimoine mondial qui a eu lieu à Reykjavik en Islande en septembre 2016 et qui a donné lieu à la création de l'association nordique du patrimoine mondial qui a été créée au sein même d'un bien du patrimoine mondial, le site de Tingvellir. J'aimerais citer ensuite la seconde rencontre des associations européennes du patrimoine mondial qui s'est tenue à Ségovie en Espagne en octobre 2016 elle faisait suite à l'initiative de la France qui avait organisé l'année précédente la première réunion des associations européennes du patrimoine mondial à Strasbourg. La thématique de la réunion de Ségovie était le rôle social du patrimoine et cette réunion a adopté une déclaration, une déclaration de Ségovie, 
détaillant des stratégies et des outils pour permettre l'intégration des communautés dans le plan de gestion. Et vous avez vu, Monsieur le Président, que ceci fait partie d'une des actions qui est en dessous des indicateurs, enfin des, des lignes établies pour son suivi. J'ai plaisir dans, cette, dans ce cadre à annoncer la troisième réunion des associations européennes qui est prévue à Lübeck à l'invitation de l'Allemagne les 5 et 6 octobre prochains et dont la thématique est partage du patrimoine mondial, sharing world heritage. Enfin, Monsieur le Président, pour rappeler l'importance du travail fait par les bureaux régionaux dans la mise en œuvre de la Convention, je souhaite mentionner une dernière activité faite avec notre bureau régional de Venise. Il s'agit de la deuxième édition de l'Académie internationale sur le développement durable qui a été organisée à Turin du 1er au 4 décembre de l'année dernière avec le centre de recherche Sylvia Santagata. Cette seconde réunion portait sur la gestion des désignations multiples relatives aux conventions de l'UNESCO, c'est-à-dire réserves de la biosphère, villes créatives et sites du patrimoine mondial. Je, je l'ai rappelé, j'ai essayé de, de le montrer, ces activités accompagnent la mise en œuvre du plan d'action, mais pour avoir participé à certaines d'entre elles, euh, il me semble qu'elles ont aussi euh, un, un un objectif essentiel dans la gouvernance du patrimoine mondial puisqu'elles permettent, elles encouragent la perméabilité et les échanges entre les différents acteurs de la gestion de ces biens, c'est-à-dire non seulement les gestionnaires de sites mais aussi les responsables des administrations locales, régionales et nationales ainsi que les acteurs politiques. Monsieur le Président, un rapport conjoint des deux sous-régions Europe et Amérique du Nord sera présenté lors de la 43e session du Comité du patrimoine mondial en 2019. Les distingués membres du comité peuvent prendre connaissance de la décision qui est 41 comme 10 B5 à la page 20 du document en français et 19 du document en anglais. J'en ai terminé, Monsieur le Président. Merci. Merci, Madame. Thank you. Now let me please open the floor for comments on this very subject. Finland is the first. Finland, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Finland welcomes this opportunity to share experiences on regional activities. We are happy to see the actions and initiatives in the implementation of the Helsinki Action Plan for Europe adopted in the 39th session. We also welcome the Helsinki Action Plan Monitoring Survey. From the Nordic perspective, uh, we wish to highlight the formation of the Nordic World Heritage Association as a regional initiative. Since 1995, the Nordic World Heritage Sites have met annually to share their experiences in implementing the World Heritage Convention. This 20-year tradition has shown that competence and capacity building is best or are best achieved uh, through international cooperation and by learning from each other. In September 2016, as was mentioned in the Secretariat presentation, a new step was taken when the Nordic World Heritage Association was founded. The purpose of the association is to contribute to the implementation of the World Heritage Convention through continual competence and capacity building. The association will lead to a network of ever more closely cooperating sites that can also make good use of various types of funding opportunities for their common project. We also wish to highlight the upcoming European Year for Cultural Heritage in uh, 2018 and invite the World Heritage Centre to take actively part in it. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Are there any other interventions? I see none. If so, I would like just to ask Mr. Rapporteur if there are any amendments received. No, Chairman, we don't have any amendment. Great. Thank you. If so, uh, let me please just declare that decision 421.10b.5 is adopted. Thank you very much, Madam.
And now we shall move on to item 12b. Dear friends, let, let us now examine item 12b of our agenda regarding the follow-up to the recommendations of the external auditors with a view to improve governance by concrete measures. Document 12b that is, I hope, in front of you contains all the relevant information on this matter. Allow me to invite Madam Director, Dr. Rezla, the Director of the World Heritage Center, to briefly present this very item. Dr. Rezla, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Uh, very briefly, uh, document 12B in front of you indeed presents the follow-up of the recommendations of the external auditor's report concerning notably governance as requested uh, by the last session of the World Heritage Committee. Um, allow me to recall that an open-ended working group with a mandate to examine the governance procedures and working methods of the governing bodies of UNESCO was established by the General Conference in 2015, as well as two subgroups. Subgroup one, which is discussing structure, composition, and methods of work of the governing bodies. Um, and subgroup two, which is examining the structure, composition, and methods of work of UNESCO's international and intergovernmental bodies. The open-ended working group established by the General Conference, as well as these two subgroups, have held several meetings in the course of 2016 and 17. Uh, during the meetings of subgroup two, and I have the pleasure to see one of the co-chair here in the room from the Philippines, um, issues related to governing bodies of the cultural conventions, including the 1972 convention, were discussed. The recognition of good practices, notably periodic reporting and appropriate methods of work, as well as appreciation of the work of the 70, 1972 Convention Secretariat, were strongly underlined by the subgroup as described in the document you have in front of you. The subgroup also met another time on 9th of June to finalize its draft recommendations. And on this occasion, it proposed several general recommendations for all international and intergovernmental bodies, mainly focusing on efficiency, harmonization, alignment with overarching priorities of, the UNESCO, uh, of UNESCO coherence, coordination and synergies and best practices. In this framework, a specific recommendation concerns the need to reduce and manage politicization of nominations and decisions. The subgroup also proposed specific recommendations for the cultural conventions and what concerns the World Heritage Convention, specifically recommended to ensure a balanced and representative World Heritage List. Um, the recommendations have been transmitted to the meeting of the open-ended um, group uh, on 23rd of June, and as indicated in the working document 12B, it is noted that the recommendations of the general conference uh, open-ended working group will be submitted to the 202nd uh, session of the executive board in October 2017, which then will transmit it to, uh, with its own comments to the 39th session of the general conference this fall. Therefore, for the time being, is, it is proposed that this committee takes note of the progress report of the ongoing work undertaken by the General Conference to examine the governance procedures and working methods of the governing bodies of UNESCO. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Dr. Resle. Now the floor goes to Philippines. Philippines, the floor is yours, sir. Thank you very much, Mr. President, and good afternoon. Our delegation is actively participating in the Working Group on Governance as co-chair of its subgroups that have been working over the past two years in Paris very intensively. As mentioned by Director Rosler, subgroup two discussed the 1972 convention and identified it as a source of best practices, such as the periodic reporting and the practice of 
establishing an ad hoc working group to look at more complex issues in between sessions. A specific recommendation that was adopted by the working group at its last meeting on the 23rd of June was for our committee, the World Heritage Committee, to ensure a balanced and representative World Heritage List, as mentioned earlier by Director Rosler. And I think this echoes discussions we had this morning, so we are glad that the issue of the global strategy for a more balanced and representative list has been given to the extended ad hoc working group to look at. The working group on governance also adopted a set of general recommendations to enhance efficiency and transparency of all intergovernmental councils and the cultural conventions, including the World Heritage Convention and its governing bodies. In particular, um, one general recommendation of particular um, importance was the need to reduce and manage politicization of nominations and decisions. Uh, we also believe that another recommendation of the working group in terms of harmonization of composition of the Bureau with other intergovernmental councils can be uh, looked at by our committee. A third general recommendation which could be of uh, interest is the call on sponsors of draft decisions and substantive amendments to, to convene consultations before these are presented to the plenary for decision and discussion. This would allow for, of course, more transparency and indeed more time for committee yeah. members to talk about uh, the draft decisions and allow for a better understanding, meeting of minds on the more difficult nominations and uh, properties, for instance. And this would also promote, I would uh, like to uh, put on record, equitable application of standard and consistency. Uh, we think it's useful for the committee to study the relevant recommendations of uh, the Working Group on Governance, which will be adopted later on this year in November by the General Conference. Uh, therefore, we have submitted some amendments through the draft decision, such as inscribing an agenda on the next uh, committee uh, session agenda to to follow up on the relevant recommendations. And we'd like to thank uh, all those committee members who have expressed support to the amendments that you will soon see on this screen. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Thank you very much, sir. And now the United Republic of Tanzania and after that, Turkey. Thank you, Chair. Tanzania commends efforts underway by the open-ended working group to examine governance procedures and the working methods of governing bodies of UNESCO. Tanzania aligns with the observation of the advisory bodies and awaits receiving recommendations of the working group along with their like impact and financial implications. In this regard, Mr. Chair, Tanzania congratulates the efforts done by the working group and the further supports the draft decision. Thank you. Thank you. Turkey, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Uh, well, I just want to briefly um, echo what uh, the chair of the uh, subgroup uh, of governance, uh, my uh, dear colleague from the uh, Philippines, has summarized. Uh, we have also, as Turkey, we have also actively participated in the uh, governance uh, working group's negotiations. And um, uh, this particular convention had uh, many good practices that we have uh, raised during the negotiations, which is reflected, as uh, Dr. Ressler has summarized, in the documents. Um, so, uh, we believe that, uh, that this should be reflected in the, uh, the working group's uh, summary, and it is actually reflected, as uh, my colleague from Philippines has mentioned. Uh, so, we, together with the Philippines, we have uh, submitted uh, a draft resolution, and we look forward to uh, continue to discussing this issue in the upcoming next committee meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Indonesia, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Indonesia would like to recall that the spirit of the establishment of the working group as mandated by the Resolution 101 is to do a holistic and comprehensive reform of UNESCO to ensure a greater eff effectivity and efficiency in the governance of UNESCO. As we understand, the working group has been working continuously throughout the past part of two years. In this regard, Indonesia believes that such work has resulted in valuable recommendations 
to respond to the need of optimizing the governance of intergovernmental programs, committee and convention, including the World Heritage Convention. We are of the view that the discussion on governance will further develop more synergy, harmonization, efficiency, and positive impact to the governing bodies of the convention. Hence, Indonesia supports the draft amendment submitted by the distinguished delegate of the Philippines. Thank you. Thank you. Now the floor goes to Finland. Excellency, the floor is yours. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Finland has actively taken part in the work, the open-ended working group on governance procedures and working methods of the governing bodies of UNESCO. As mentioned by the delegation of the Philippines uh, during the meetings of the working group, several good practices of the World Heritage Convention have been mentioned, such as periodic reporting, the live streaming of the committee sessions, and the working group open to all state parties during the sessions. As Finland has pointed out in several occasions, efficient governance, policy coherence, and functional intersectoral and interprogrammatic linkages are crucial in making UNESCO work coherent, credible, and influential. We greet all actions taken so far in improving the governance of culture conventions. Even if the different nature of the conventions in certain points may cause challenges, there is still plenty of possibilities to be examined further. We invite the World Heritage Convention to con continuous dialogue and to concrete measures of cooperation with UNESCO's cultural as well as biodiversity-related conventions and programs. We look forward for the to the recommendations of the Working Group on Governance and welcome an adequate follow-up on this item. We have co-sponsored with the Philippines the amendment uh, to the draft decision. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Ambassador. Now, Korea, the Republic of Korea. The floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I also would like to uh, briefly comment um, on this. The Republic of Korea also would like to support the amended draft decision put forward by the distinguished delegate of the uh, Philippines. I, I expect that uh, the recommendation of the working group on governance would provide us with overarching views to enhance efficiency of working methods of the committee. I strongly believe that it is worth of studying and examining, uh, examining the, the relevant recommendations of the working group on the governance, which can be good basis for further discussion. And in this regard, I think it is pertinent to discuss on this item at the next session. Thank you. Thank you. And now Zimbabwe, Madam, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you, Chair. Zimbabwe appreciates and commends the work over the past two years that has been done by the open-ended working group. Uh, <clears throat> we also commend the progress made by the two subgroups of the open-ended group. We look forward to the finalization of the work by the working group and its subgroup. Zimbabwe reiterates its support for the amended draft decision. Thank you. Thank you. Now, Cuba. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Cuba also supports the amendment proposed by Philippines. Thank you. Thank you. Cuba, the floor is yours. Mr. Uh, Chairperson, we support the amendment of Philippines. Thank you very much. Thank you. I understand that it was the last intervention from the floor concerning this very document. If so, let me please go directly to the rapporteur and to the amendment. Mr. Chumau, could you kindly inform us about the shape of the draft decision right now? Thank you, Mr. Chair. As his it has been appointed by the chairman of this draft group. We have a new three paragraphs which have been added to the previous draft decision. So you can see it from the screen, paragraph one, two, three, it has not been modified. We have new paragraph four, which read, decide to study the relevant recommendation of the working group on the governance procedures and a working method of the governance body of UNESCO established by General Conference Resolution 38C stroke 101. The paragraph number five requests the World Heritage Center to provide the committee 
with information on the outcomes of the working group on, the gov on governance in due course. And the last paragraph six, deci also decide to inscribe an item on its agenda at its 42nd session in 2018 on the follow-up and implementation of a recommendation of a working group on governance before endorsed by general conference. There's technicality, Mr. Chairman. The proposed draft didn't have the words as endorsed, but as we know, it has been said by the chairman that this general conference will take place in November. So we don't want to we anticipate, but we have to just rephrase it in our writing. So we add the word as to reflect that idea. Thank you. Accept it. Thanks. It means that we accept para one, accepted para two, accepted para three, accepted para four, accepted as amended, para five, accepted as amended, and finally para six, accepted as amended, which means that I can now declare draft decision 41 com 12 b adopted as amended. Thank you very much, dear colleagues, and now I declare item 12 closed, which means that now uh, we are sailing towards our dear chairperson of the working group on the operational guidelines. Let me just remind you all that the working group met during the last days and is proposing a revised draft decision 11 on the revision of the operational guidelines, which has been distributed to you and is proposed for adoption. If you allow me, I would like to invite Mr. Chad Tabet yeah, to further report to the committee members on this very matter. Mm -hmm. Mr. Tabet, you are warmly welcome. And please. You have the floor. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I have the pleasure to present you with the conclusions and the draft decision elaborated by the working group on the operational guidelines as constituted on Monday, July 3rd, under item 11. Last year, the committee at its 40th session adopted in decision 40 com 11 a revision of paragraph 61 of the operation guidelines. However, despite the extensive discussion, no consensus was reached on the revision of paragraph 68 and 0. Annexes 24 and 2b regarding tentative lists and this matter was included, sorry, uh, despite the extensive discussion, no consensus was reached on the revision of paragraph 68 and annexes 2A and 2B regarding tentative lists, and this matter was included into the mandate of the ad hoc working group for examination at the 31st session. The second item on the agenda of the operation guidelines working group concerned chapter 5 and annex 7 requested by the committee by decisions 39,10B5 and 40,10A. The first meeting of the working group on the operation guidelines was held on Friday, July 7. Over 57 participants were pre present. It was agreed to first discuss paragraph 68 and then chapter 5 and annex 7. Concerning paragraph 68, the first discussion was dealt, with, was dealt with smoothly and efficiently, guided by a solution-oriented approach. 
is started with a presentation by Mrs. Katarina Piotrowska of the National Heritage Board of Poland, who chaired the ad hoc subgroup tasked with discussions on paragraph 68, and whom I want to thank for her successful and wise chairmanship of the ad hoc working uh, sub subgroup. She gave an overview of the outcomes of the group's work. Mrs. Piotrowska recalled that attempts had been made see, since 2007 to deal with these issues, and that the current discussion has been on the ad agenda of the Operation Guideline Working Group since 2015. Starting from November 2016, the group met every month as agreed, six times, and discussed extensively many possible options for resolving the issues related to paragraph 68. The group began with a discussion in the broadest possible context and, in addition to paragraph 68, has formulated a number of proposals on different aspects of the tentative lists, which were later included in the list of, recommendation, of recommendations presented in document WHC 1741-COM-12A. With regard to the proposal for paragraph 68, it has been unanimously agreed by the ad hoc working group and has also been discussed and presented at two open-ended meetings of the group. The proposal suggests to continue the current mechanism of registering tentative lists, maintaining the presentation to the committee and their publication on the World Heritage Center website. The group also proposed the introduction of an amendment to paragraph 68 in a form of a disclaimer, underlining the national character of the lists and noting that publication does not imply any expression of opinion on the part of the World Heritage Committee, of the Secretariat, or of UNESCO. A number of state parties took the floor to express appre appreciation for the work achieved and support for the recommendations proposed and solution identified by the ad hoc working group. The discussion on paragraph 68 concluded with the Operation Guidelines Working Group consensually agreeing to this proposal, as well as to the recommendations included in the draft decision 39 COM 11 proposed by the ad hoc group in document WHC 1741 COM 12A, Chapter 5 and Annex 7. The working group then moved into the discussion of Chapter 5 and Annex 7 requested by the committee by decisions 39,10B5 and, 10, and 40,10A. In its opening remarks, the Secretariat emphasized the importance of the task of updating the, the uh, operation guidelines as requested by the committee, and this has not been done since 1997. The group was then given a brief presentation of the PR reflection, including the main updates, improvements, and development to the PR questionnaire and process, as well as the findings of the reflection survey, such as the general support for maintaining the four PR objectives. The, sec the, the Secretariat also highlighted the main changes to, be, to the PR questionnaire online tool including the new questions related to synergies with Azure conventions, such as, for example, 1954 54, uh, Hague Convention and its second protocol, which is today uh, very important, and questions related to sustainable development. The proposal was then examined paragraph by paragraph. Several questions were raised, namely about consistency over a six-year time lapse and feasibility of the Global World Heritage Report. Clarifications were made by the Secretariat and the lead expert of the periodic reporting reflection group, Dr. Christopher Young. At the end of the first day's session, the working group had covered half of the proposed changes. The group then met the following day with 43 participants in attendance and the work resumed on the final paragraphs of Chapter 5 and then moved on to the format of periodic, of periodic reporting contained in Annex 7. 
It was noted that the format has been completely replaced and is now in a simplified and more general form that allows some degree of flexibility for future, future changes. The format was reviewed paragraph by paragraph and unanimously agreement was reached. The group then reviewed and agreed the decision as amended. The mandate of the Vergen Group was thus, was thus concluded in an efficient manner. Thanks mostly to the commendable work achieved by the ad hoc group under the chairing on, of Mrs. Protirovska. Given the remaining time in the, this session, the chair proposed a discussion outside the mandate of the group on the relevance and future of Annex 3 to the operation guidelines, which, as previously requested by the committee in Bonn with decision 39, COM 11, should be reviewed entirely so as to include definitions and relevant guidelines for state parties in the preparation of tentative lists, nominations, management, and reporting systems. A lively discussion on the approach to be taken to Annex 3 ensued with numerous state parties as well as advisory bodies, taking the floor with questions and reflections on the content and on the pertinence of this Annex and how the work could be organized. After further deliberation, it was agreed that it is important that the committee recall its previous decision on Annex 3, Decision 39, Com 11, Paragraph 8, in order to ensure follow-up and that the best way forward would be for this issue to be added to the mandate of the Operation Guidelines Working Group for examination in two years' time at the 43rd session. Now, uh, the Category 2 uh, Center in Bahrain uh, uh, announced that it would be ready to host uh, uh, next year a preparatory meeting about Annex 3. But this is to be discussed yet. Uh, the mandate of the working group came to an end. It was decided that the last allocated working session uh, on 9 of July could be used as an opportunity to hold an informal discussion and question and answer question and answer session. We called it uh, 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 side event. <laughs> side event. Uh, on the periodic reporting reflection and launch of the third cycle prior to the discussion of item 10A on July 11th. Finally, it's a pleasure for me uh, to submit to the committee the final report that marks the end of the revision of operation guidelines process that started in the 39th session in Bonn. I have had the honor to chair the three working groups that tackled this issue in Bonn, Istanbul, Paris, and Krakow. Since my mandate at the committee ends next November, I would like to express my satisfaction for the success of the revision process and would like to thank all those who participated in this process, member states, ad hoc working group chairs, advisory bodies and World Heritage Center. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your clear presentation and allow me also on behalf of the committee to congratulate you for your excellence, excellent work on this matter and the efficiency which is really something. If there are no com comments from the floor at the moment, which would also prove the quality and efficiency. Philippines, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. President. Just very, very briefly, we'd like to take the floor to thank Mr. Tabit for his work, not only at this session, but as he mentioned, over the past three sessions, which has really been um, really commendable. And uh, we really thank him for the, the achievements he's achieved. We also wish to warmly congratulate Ms. Katarzyna Pietrzakowska, who chaired the discussions in the ad hoc working group over the course of the last eight months and which helped us reach this consensus on the outcome of paragraph 68 which is balanced and pragmatic 
and we also see that the supplementary recommendations reflected in the draft recommendation, which encourage uh, constructive dialogue among concerned states' parties, can hopefully help reduce some of the problems we encounter at the level of the tentative lists and also at the nomination stage here in the committee. So just with this, we wanted to put on record our appreciation to the two chairs. Thank you very much. Thank you. If there are no more comments, I see none. I declare the revised draft decision 421-COM-11 adopted and item 11 close. Once again, Mr. Tavet, thank you very much indeed. Fly low and slow. Thank you. Dear colleagues, you will recall that it was decided to examine the general decision 421.7 on the state of conservation of world heritage properties at the end of our debates on items 7a and 7b. This agenda item was introduced on Tuesday morning last week. It was introduced by the director of the World Heritage Center and the advisory bodies, as you may still remember. I would like to know whether there are any comments on this very agenda item. Poland wishes to take the floor. The floor is yours, Poland. As I can see, Dr. Katarzyna Piotrowska, it is the genuine Polish pronunciation of the family name of Dr. Piotrask. The floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, it's another subject. It's not the 68 and the tentative list, but I would like to thank for all the good words I've received. Uh, speaking about item 7, uh, you are already well informed about the World Heritage Site Managers Forum that took place as an event accompanying this very committee session. Uh, by the way, it was received by the participants of the forum. We feel obliged to bring it back to the plenary with a very short uh, summary. The forum was organized by the National Heritage Board of Poland together with ICROM in close, very close cooperation with the World Heritage Center and with involvement of IUCN and ICOMOS. The forum was attended by about 100 participants from 25 states' parties representing all types of World Heritage properties from all regions around the world. The idea of the forum was to unite representatives from World Heritage properties with those at the heart of the World Heritage procedures, as stronger bridges should be built between the procedural core of the World Heritage system and World Heritage site managers, whose ongoing work to safeguard values of the properties constitutes the real expression of the Convention. Objectives of the Forum were to assist site managers in learning the decision-taking process and to understand the role that the World Heritage Committee has in safeguarding World Heritage properties, inform site managers about the reactive monitoring process and to expose them to it at the decision-taking level see and better understand site managers' role in the reactive monitoring process at the state lab party level, and ask site managers for their views on the World Heritage System and opinions on what, from their perspective, may or should be improved. I would like to draw your attention to the conclusions of the meeting presented in the statement prepared by the forum participants. The statement contains the observations and needs referring to World Heritage System, World Heritage Processes, and capacity building. The observations of World Heritage Site Managers should be carefully considered by all parties within the World Heritage System as an important voice of those who work on a day-to-day basis to protect our common heritage. Copies of the statement were distributed and are available in the plenary. The document is also accessible from the session's website. 
The engagement of the participants of the forum, as well as interventions during its closing on the 6th of July, leave no doubts to the need for continuation of the site managers' meetings in conjunction with the World Heritage Committee sessions. Uh, we have proposed an, a slight amendment to the draft decision that acknowledges the statement prepared by the participants of the forum. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Now, Angola, the floor is yours. Thank you, uh, Chairperson. In the same perspective, as we mark this year the 10th anniversary of the United Nations Declaration on the right of indigenous people, and the framework of the Agenda 2030, which invites us to focus a human rights and the dignity for all, with a clear focus to leave no one behind, and taking into account the conclusion of the International Indigenous Peoples Forum on the World Heritage that took place at this fourth first session of the World Heritage Committee, Angola submitted an amendment by adding one additional paragraph at the end of the draft resolution. So thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Portugal, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. President. Just very briefly, um, we have also suggested an amendment to the draft decision, uh, a draft decision we consider um, instrumental for, for the, the conservation uh, and, and the protection of um, world heritage sites. Uh, and uh, it's, it's, it's very comprehensive. But we, we thought, as we had suggested, um, when we were discussing under 7A, the, um, the historic sentence of um, Shah Krisiyaz, Uzbekistan, that it, it would be good um, to recall the importance of paragraph 172 of the operation guidelines. And by recalling that paragraph, we, we thought that we could also liaise to a request that uh, this committee made last year under this very same um, ad, um, agenda, a point of the agenda, which was to um, request to the World Heritage Center in cooperation with advisory bodies uh, to indeed evaluate the effectiveness of the reactive monitoring um, missions. So this is the reasoning of, uh, of our um, suggested amendment to this draft decision. Thank you very much. Thank you. Poland, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you. I'm sorry for taking it for the second time. But there is, one, uh, there is another meeting that took place to the, uh, during the session that should be also mentioned here. Uh, I'm referring to the very important initiative of the chairperson of, on structured dialogue, dialogue with civil society. Uh, the meeting took place as a site event on the 5th of July, and it was organized by the National Heritage Board of Poland and Europa Nostra. It is a very important step towards dialogue with civil society organizations. We should look for a better and more effective involvement of civil society in conservation of world heritage, of world heritage on the site and the national level, and get their input to the heritage-related debate on the global scale. We have proposed an amendment to the draft decision on re uh, reflected the, the initiative. Thank you. Thank you. And, uh, I do not see any more interventions from the side of the floor. It means that I'm giving the floor to Dr. Resler, and after that we go to the rapporteur and finally to observers and uh, non-governmental organizations. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chair. So I just want to answer the question from uh, Portugal. I think it's very important to recall the provisions of paragraph 100. 
72. I just wanted um, to inform you that um, we have uh, already uh, made a project um, on improving the effectiveness of the World Heritage Reactive Monitoring pro um, process, and that was presented it at the marketplace event. So we have advanced on this, so and we hope to get funding uh, for this project, which would be absolutely in line with what you have just uh, proposed as an amendment to uh, the draft decision. Thank you very much. Thank you. So let's go directly to the Rapporteur, Mr. Juma, could you kindly inform us? I'm sorry. I see. Dear colleagues, if so, let me please first recognize the observers to give, give them also a chance to participate in the final version and final shape of our important decision. I can see at the side of NGOs Europa Nostra, Madam. Mieszka Kładlewik Michailowicz. Madam, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Distinguished representatives of the state parties, dear colleagues and friends, we are grateful for the opportunity to address the plenary session of the World Heritage Committee on behalf of Europa Nostra, a pan European organization which has a membership of 250 NGOs and a network of 150 associate organizations. With over 50 years of experience, we have become the voice of civil society committed to cultural heritage in Europe. We are, however, confident that our brief intervention will also echo the views of so many colleagues who work for heritage all over the globe with competence, dedication and passion and various levels of governance, local, national and international. We first wish to express our special thanks to you, Mr. Chair. You have kept your promise. Here in Krakow, a very large number of NGOs could take the floor. We wish to commend this most welcome development and wish to encourage your successors to continue along the same path. We also wish to thank the host country, Poland, through its National Heritage Board for their vital support for the organization jointly with Europa Nostra on 5 July of a side event entitled for a structured dialogue with civil society. This Krakow initiative, I'm very glad to report, also received full support from UNESCO Director General Irina Bokova, whom we had the pleasure of meeting last Monday. We are glad to report to you that apart from NGOs, our side event was attended by different stakeholders, state parties, the organization of World Heritage Cities, the advisory bodies, and last but not least, by the World Heritage Center, represented by its director, Dr. Merkel Rösler. We are now grateful for this opportunity to convey to the World Heritage Committee the key messages which have been identified before, during, and after this side event on the basis of numerous conversations and consultations with various partners concerned, both public and private. First of all, we wish to acknowledge that a lot has been done to involve civil society at various levels site managers, historic cities, state parties, the advisory bodies, the World Heritage Center, and increasingly also at the level of the World Heritage Committee. But so much more could be done to ensure that the dialogue with civil society becomes more structured, more regular, and thus more effective. Why? Because this would contribute to further strengthening the good governance, the credibility, and the effectiveness of the World Heritage Convention. We all seem to agree that this convention and its operational guidelines give ample space for the building of such a structured dialogue. But we also wish to acknowledge some recent wider developments which are relevant in this context. Let us, for example, mention the policy document on sustainable development adopted in 2015. Uh, also the relevance of UN Agenda 2030 and the SDGs, and especially the SDG 16 and SDG 17, besides SDG 11.4 
And let us finally refer to the human rights approach to cultural heritage developed under the UN auspices through the work of UN Special Rapporteur for Cultural Rights. All these wider developments stress the vital importance of citizen participation and full involvement of local communities in decision-making with regard to their cultural and natural heritage. And let me add that more recently at our Congress held in Turku in Finland, Europa Nostra adopted a Turku Manifesto, Participation Counts for Heritage. We also wish to acknowledge the organization for the last five years of an NGO forum prior to the meeting of the World Heritage Committee to discuss specific World Heritage cases and explore ways to strengthen the voice of civil society during the meetings of the World Heritage Committee. To achieve a more structured dialogue with civil society, further efforts are needed on all sides. We are fully aware that the World Heritage Committee and its Secretariat cannot deal efficiently with hundreds of NGOs. Therefore, we, the heritage NGOs, have to organize ourselves better in order to provide a credible and manageable platform and partner for dialogue. The various international non-governmental organizations which operate at a global or regional level, such as the case of Europa Nostra, seek to contribute to this goal. We NGOs working in the field of cultural heritage can learn a lot from the more advanced level of organization and resources demonstrated by our colleagues working in the field of nature conservation with a key role played by IUCN. While commending the vital work carried out by our colleagues from ICOMOS and ICROM, we in particular look forward to discussing with those two advisory bodies best ways to ensure a more systematic and effective input from civil society organization with regard to cultural heritage sites on the World Heritage List. To end, Mr. Chair, let me stress that we stand ready to pursue this Krakow initiative by coordinating an informal working group composed of a limited but representative group of heritage NGOs and their networks and with due participation of the representatives of the World Heritage Committee, the World Heritage Center and the advisory bodies. The aim of this working group will be to discuss and make some recommendations for a more structured dialogue with civil society on World Heritage matters. We believe that time is ripe to have a discussion on this subject at the next year's meeting of the World Heritage Committee. We therefore suggest to this committee and in Secretariat to find an adequate place in the agenda of the 42nd session of the committee for these important discussions. Mr. Chair, we very much hope that the World Heritage Committee will endorse and participate in this initiative. Thank you very much, Madam. Thank you very much. Uh, I do hope that really this very session could be re also remembered as a kind of a new opening concerning this important relationship between heritage and society. I understand that Australia, which is so far away, I shall excuse second time. Do forgive me. Uh, the floor is yours, Excellency. Uh, thank you, Chair, and of course forgiven, and thank you very much for your superb uh, chairing of this meeting. Uh, I wish to address three aspects of the draft decision. Uh, first, Australia underlines the seriousness with which we must all engage in efforts to deal with invasive alien species impacting our natural world heritage properties. Invasive species pose a deep threat to the outstanding universal value of many places. Second, Australia strongly affirms the need to address illegal wildlife trade through effective implementation by states' parties of their responsibilities as signatories to the Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species. In particular, we need to deal with illegal wildlife trade where intervention is most effective, reducing demand, so that this illegal trade no longer finds a market. This trade is worth an estimated US $20 billion per year the fourth largest source of crime globally after people trafficking, arms dealing and drug smuggling. I commend to all delegates the 2016 report on illegal wildlife trade produced by the United Nations Office on Drugs and Crime. It is an accessible and highly informative report. Third, and most critically, Australia welcomes the focus at this meeting on the impact of climate change and mass coral bleaching on world heritage properties. The consequences of climate change for reef ecosystems are being felt sooner and more deeply than anticipated by the scientific community even five years ago. The global mass coral bleaching event, which began in 2014, has caused extensive damage to world heritage properties across the globe 
the Great Barrier Reef included. Significantly, the worst bleaching on the Great Barrier Reef in 2016 was concentrated in the northern third of the reef, the most remote area farthest from any substantial direct human influence. It underlines the truly global nature of the threat of climate change, that it goes beyond the ability of states, parties and site managers to address alone. That concerted effort by the international community as a whole is required. That is why Australia is strongly committed to the implementation of the Paris Agreement to ensure that every effort is made globally to hold the increase in global average temperature to well below two degrees above pre-industrial levels and pursuing efforts to limit the temperature increase to 1.5 degrees. The risk to our common natural heritage is stark and urgent, but the outlook is not hopeless. The world's reefs can be protected. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any comments now? I see none. Are you CN? The floor is yours. Uh, thank you, Chair. Apart from uh, supporting all the comments Australia has just made, and th thanks for those. I just wanted to um, just draw out two very quick points. Um, one, I think, is it just is appropriate to notice um, how um, important the initiative to create the Site Managers Forum was at this meeting. Uh, so I'd really like to congratulate Poland uh, on that initiative. I, once upon a time, was a World Heritage Site Manager, and I think creating, creating space um, in the committee's business to allow site managers to come together is a, a really great initiative and I think it will be good firstly to encourage that to continue and, and uh, secondly I think uh, just speaking for IUCN um, I'd like to make clear that we'd like to make a response to the site managers um, uh, forum document uh, to try to respond to these uh, good ideas and constructive suggestions for how uh, our work could be more um, more effective. So um, I'd like to say that we will we will do that, and perhaps through um, uh, Anya Marconi Betka, we can get uh, that message back through um, back through to the site managers. And secondly, just to thank the um, uh, thank um, Europe and Austria for their comments. Um, speaking, I think more more broadly for the, the interests in NGO in, in NGO participation. Um, this is also something that IUCN has been advocating for some time, and in fact, uh, one of the conclusions on World Heritage at the last IUCN um, once in a decade World Parks Congress was uh, how much um, the, the convention would benefit from opening up the opportunities for civil society to participate. And I think the uh, the way that uh, those ideas were put over by Europe and Austria, I think, really help us to crystallise what the challenges are, and I think uh, the opportunity to debate that further at the next meeting of the committee would be extremely welcome. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. So if so, we go directly to the rapporteur. The floor is yours. Thank you, Chairman. We have in front of us uh, draft decision seven. As you can see, distinguished members, Paragraph one has not been modified. We have paragraph two, it's also not modified. Paragraph three, there's proposal of addition from distinguished delegate Poland, which say, takes note with appreciation of the World Heritage Site Managers Forum statement that encourages the future host country to continue this initiative and organize World Heritage Site Managers Forum in conjunction with World Heritage Committee session. Paragraph four has not been modified. We have new paragraph five proposed by Portugal, recalling the importance of paragraph 172 of operational guideline and adequate implementation, further recalling decision 40.7, which requests the World Heritage Center in cooperation with advisory body to evaluate the effectiveness of reactive monitoring including procedures and case studies, and to present a preliminary report for consideration by World Heritage Committee at its 42nd session in 2018, if funds are available. Now we have new paragraph six, which was original paragraph five. Paragraph seven, eight, nine, 10, 
11, 12, 13, 14. Paragraph 13, there is a new addition, Mr. Chairman and distinguished members, which say, and welcome the FR of Government of Poland to host an international conference on construction to provide guidelines on the World Health Committee to be held in Warsaw in March 2018. Now paragraph, original paragraph 14 becomes 15, so we have new, we have paragraph 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, has not been amended. We have slightly addition in paragraph 22 from distinguished delegate Finland, Jamaican and Angola, which say, I'll read the old paragraph, reiterate the importance of state party undertaking the most ambitious implementation of the Paris Agreement of the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change by pursuing effort to limit the global average temperature increasing to 1.5 degrees above pre-industrial level and it strongly invites all state parties to, to ratify the Paris Agreement at the earliest possible opportunity and to undertake action to address climate change and the Paris Agreement consistent consists with their common but differential responsibilities and respective capabilities in the light of different national circumstances that are fully consistent with their obligation within the World Heritage Convention to pursue the outstanding universal value of the World Heritage property. Paragraph, the original paragraph 22 now become 23. So we have 23, 24, 25. Paragraph 25, there is addition with from distinguished delegates of Finland, Jamaica, and Angola, which say and not with appreciation the willingness of civil society group to engage in this process. Paragraph 26, new original 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38 has not been amended. We have paragraph 39, Mr. Chairman, you recall in the early days of this session, Distinguished delegates of Philippines propose action, and we say that we'll take to this decision seven. This is this is was discussed under item five a. Now the paragraph say retaliate its request to the World Health Center in consultation with advisory bodies and the state party to promote better understanding of implication and the benefit of property being inscribed in the list of World Health in danger and to develop appropriate information material in this regard with a view to, voc to overcome the negative perception of the list of World Heritage in danger. The information material should highlight the importance of perception of the outstanding universal value. We have also new paragraph 40 from this language of Poland, which read, takes note with appreciation of the chairperson initiative on the structuring dialogue with civil society and encourage state party and civil society organization to continue exploring possibilities how civil society can further contribute to enhance conservation of heritage of heritage on the site and national level and provide relative input to the heritage related debate on the global level. We have also paragraph 41 from distinguished delegate of Angola which says also notes in conformity with the Revolution 20 JR 13 of General Assembly of the World Heritage Convention and Decision 39, COM 11 of the World Heritage Committee, the establishment of the International Indigenous Peoples Forum on the World Heritage, on the World Heritage is an important reflection platform on the involvement of indigenous people in the identification, conservation, and management of World Heritage properties with a particular focus on the nomination process. This is what is proposed, Mr. Sherman, for this draft decision. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Juma. The ladies and gentlemen, now it is a challenge. It is the longest document as the number of the paragraphs is concerned, 41. But it is a very important document, which means that I seek your 
also help and understanding. Let's try to browse through, to go through all those paragraphs step by step. Para one, accepted. Para two, accepted. Para three, accepted as amended. Para four, accepted. Para five, accepted as amended. Para six, para seven, para eight, para nine, accepted. Para ten, para eleven, para twelve, para thirteen, clear, accepted. Para fourteen, accepted as amen. Uh, para fifteen, sixteen, eighteen. 17 and 18, I hope that this is clear. Accepted. Para the 19, the 20th, 21, and 20, 21. Accepted. Para 22. Turkey wishes to take the floor. Para 22. The floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, well, while we understand the importance of the amendment made by Finland, Jamaica, and Angola, uh, I mean, we have some doubts whether we should have um, a very technical language here because we're not climate ch at the climate change negotiations here and we're not climate change experts. So we prefer to have a more general language and delete the first part, uh, the first proposal, uh, by pursuing efforts to limit yeah, that part, just to delete it. It's uh, very te technical uh, for this text, we believe. Thank you. Thank you, Turkey. Philippines, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. President. We'd like to thank um, Finland, Jamaica, and Angola for these amendments on paragraph 22, which, uh, in our view, uh, add value to the text. And we note that they are direct quotations from the Paris Agreement, which has already been adopted. Therefore, we have no problems with both additions. Thank you. I wonder if there is any reaction. Portugal, the floor is yours, Excellency. Thank you very, very much, Mr. President. May I? Uh... Let's have a look at the French version of uh, Article 14, just to check something. We shall go back to 14, as I just, understand. There, there we are. Yes, 14. Yes, uh, I believe there's again a problem of translation, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, to provide guidelines, it's not exactly the same thing. I see. So, shall we... Afin de fournir des directives, or de donner des directives, afin de procurer des directives. It's not a procurement. Thank you uh, very sick. much for this important remark to improve the quality of language, as I understand, and the meaning itself. So, let me please uh, revisit para 14 and re- accept it as amended second time and now we are going back to para 22 I shall approach Turkey asking uh, if it is a direct quote from the, as I understand, previous document from, yes, from, from the Paris Agreement, as Philippines rightly pointed, 
if you could kindly in a way accept this sentence. The floor is yours, Turkey. Well, thank you very much for the clarification. Uh, but uh, not all the state parties have uh, ratified the P Paris Agreement. So um, for those who have not yet, I think it would be good to just have a general reference, if possible. Thank you. So if so, if you could kindly propose the change, if I may ask you kindly. So if we delete, I shall ask the other parties if it would be acceptable for those who have already signed the Paris Agreement. Finland, Excellency, could you kindly help me, please, to survive this very small ecological crisis? Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, of course, uh, our first priority would be to retain the text as it has considerable support, but of course we understand that not all, all countries have ratified the agreement. Uh, so, actually our original idea was that we might even add some text before the word by pursuing and refer at length to the text of the Paris Agreement, because it's agreed language. We have, we have a proposal for that, but it does not solve the issue that uh, which, has been, which has been presented. So, for the time being, we would like to maintain the text as there seems to be support. I'm not surprised. So, we do continue a, a crisis, as you understand. Jamaica, Jamaica, if you could kindly help us as a rescue operation from uh, Jamaica. Chair, I'm not so sure that I can do a rescue operation, but it, it really just is to re-emphasize the point that uh, as it is drafted, we, we try to maintain as, as far as possible because we must find a way to make appropriate linkages to other conventions, other agreements that bear in some way or the other to the work that we do uh, in this committee and to the, to the work that applies to the World Heritage Convention. Uh, and within that vein, I think it is important for us to make this kind of uh, you know, general frame as noted by the Philippines, this is really a part of the Paris Agreement, which is a document that we are all familiar with in some way, shape, or form. I think it's something that should be maintained. Um, I, I, really, I really can't see the, the challenge as presented. Thank you. Thank you. I, just, uh, I would like just to inform you that I am very close to ask you for show of hands to solve the problem, but now Portugal, Excellency, the floor is yours. Yes, uh, Mr. President, through you I would like some clarification from Turkey because I want really to, I try to understand what the real problem is, because I understand that uh, Turkey has, uh, is a signatory of, of the Paris Agreement, but they haven't yet ratified the the, 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 the agreement. So, uh, fundamentally, there is no lack of agreement. So, uh, what does Turkey actually, and I ask this in a very friendly way, of course, object to? Is it the reference to 1.5? Uh, is it the whole reference? Uh, because I believe we can get around the 1.5 in another way. Uh, but if it's a general objection, then I'm afraid we will go for a show of hands. Thank you. Thank you, Turkey. The floor is yours. Well, actually, yes, as um, distinguished ambassador of Portugal has mentioned, we, we are signatory, but we have not yet ratified Paris Agreement. So um, for us, 
it's really way too technical um, to have such a reference here. That's why we want to keep it as, um, as general as possible. Uh, for that reason, we actually um, wanted to have something of, if you can give me one second. Uh, something of uh, this sort. Noting that the Paris Agreement is a way forward in tackling climate change and calls upon states to do their utmost within climate action in line with the principle of common but differentiated responsibilities and respective capabilities and in light, their, in light of their national circumstances. Something of that sort, a, a general reference. Um, if possible. Thank you. Portugal, excellency of the research. I'm, um, I'm sorry, with all due, due respect to our Turkish colleague, I think uh, we are just uh, creating more problems than solving them with that type. We are getting in very, very tricky ground. Sorry. Uh, so it took all the delegations in Paris, all the work uh, that you, we all know of, to get to a balanced uh, drafting of this type of thing. Uh, so, uh, Mr. President, I would suggest that we move forward on this issue. Thank you. Angola and Philippines. Thank you, Ambassador. Angola. Thanks, Mr. Chair. Actually, I wanted to say what the Ambassador just said. You know, it took lots of effort to get that specific text. And if you looked at the beginning of the text, we are just reiterating the importance of, of this most ambitious um, um, text. And uh, if you look at the second part of the paragraph, we strongly invite all parties to ratify the Paris Agreement. So I, I, I think it's, it's quite clear our intention here. And um, I would support again to keep the text. Thank you. Thank you. It is clear to my understanding, no doubt. Philippines, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. Chairperson. Um, we share the views of uh, the distinguished ambassador of Portugal and Angola. However, to address the concerns of my dear colleague from Turkey, um, perhaps, and just just a brief attempt, a slight attempt to maybe to, to bridge the small gap maybe we have. If we could quote then the entirety of Article 2.1a of the Paris Agreement, maybe this might address the concerns of our Turkish colleague and uh, it's before, um, well, at the beginning of the amendment, and to quote the entire phrase, holding the increase in the global average temperature to well below 2 degrees centigrade above pre-industrial levels and pursuing. So that's the en entire quote of that relevant article. So I'm just wondering if the entire quote might be uh, enough to, to help Turkey uh, join the consensus on this. Thank you. Thank you. I understand that tertium non datur, there is no the third way. We can now try to accept this very amendment, or I will ask the floor for show of hands. Turkey. The floor is yours. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Well, we're not exactly satisfied, but we don't want to, of course, break the consensus on this issue. We thought that it's not very appropriate to have this, you know, very technical uh, language from the Paris Agreement here. But of course, we don't want to block uh, the DR on this particular issue and uh, go for a show of hands. So we would, of course, uh, in this case, since I see that there is no support uh, in our favor, we will agree with the consensus. Thank you. Of what is for sure that there is no support, which is visible. But the question is, uh, to what extent uh, this new version is acceptable for everybody in both versions?
Portugal, Ambassador the floor is yours. Uh, I thank our uh, Turkish colleague for her comp comprehension of the problem. Uh, as I suspected, the 1.5 is the issue. So uh, I can live perfectly well with the, um, with the suggestion put up by the Philippines. We don't adjust repeating what is said in a text that we all sign. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Chairman. Reporter is So just clarity here, uh, because there are some people there taking notes. Can you please distinguish the delegate of Philippines, repeat completely the court so that we get clear here. Thank you, Chair. Just, it's holding the increase in the global average temperature to well below two degrees centigrade above pre-industrial levels and pursuing efforts to limit. Thank you. Let me please ask you all if it is acceptable. There is no doubt that the message is not pretty clear, but it is the price of the compromise, as I understand. Compromise means, means always a trial. So. Can I understand that we are all agree? I would like to ask the distinguished delegate of uh, Philippines if is that as you have proposed? If you say yes, I'm going to go further on. Yes. Dear colleagues, so para 22 is adopted as Finland. So our crisis continues. Thank you. The floor Thank is you. yours. I'm, I would like just to repeat that I'm ready to ask you for show of hands. No, Chair, uh, just a, a Finland. correction. Text. Missing word. Ah, next. I understand that Finland uh, is simply future oriented. Good. So 23. Ambassador, the floor is yours. Thank you, Chair. Just a small, a small comment on the 22. Uh, I guess there is a missing word before the word holding. It, there should read by holding. Because it, it, it goes, reiterates the importance by holding and perhaps by pursuing. Thank you. Thank you. Anyway, I declare again uh, para 22 accepted as amended as a result of a difficult compromise. 23, easy, accepted. 24, accepted. 25, accepted as amended. 26. Accepted, 27, 28, 29, accepted, 30, 31, 32, accepted, 33, 34, accepted, 35, 36, accepted. 37 and 38 
accepted. Now, 39. Accepted as amended. 34. Civil society. Angola wishes to take the floor. The floor is yours. Uh, Monsieur le Président, juste une question de précision en fait. On, il faut qu'on qualifie de quel président s'agit-il. Président de la session, de la 41e, de la 42e. Je crois qu'il faut que ça soit précis dans les textes. Thank you. Just added. Now it is quite clear that it's me. We understand. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> Thank you. So, 40 accepted as amended, and I'm very grateful to Angola. I'm personally grateful. 41. Accepted as amended. I'm also grateful to Angola for indigenous people. It is important that first time at the very session, this very point is emphasized and present. Mm -hmm. Dear colleagues, so finally, let me please declare decision 421.7 adopted as amended. We are almost at the finish of this today's marathon. And now I shall invite Mr. Alessandro Balsamo uh, to give us the updated list of World Heritage in Danger, taking into account the decision taking taken during the examination of the State of Conservation reports, as well as the nominations of properties on the World Heritage List. The update of the list will be presented orally by Mr. Balsamo. Mr. Balsamo, the floor is yours. Thank you, Chair. The committee at this very session in Krakow inscribed 21 new properties on the World Heritage List three natural and 18 cultural, and approved the extension of five properties already inscribed on the list. The new overall, new overall figures on the World Heritage List are now the following. 1,073 properties, of which 80, 832 are cultural, 206 natural and 35 mixed. The breakdown by region of the new 21 properties inscribed at this session is Africa three properties, Arab region one property, Asia Pacific seven properties, Europe North America eight properties, and Latin America and Caribbean two properties. The state parties of Angola and Eritrea had their first property inscribed on the World Heritage List. And out of the 21 successful nominations for are situated on the territory of current, current committee members. Following the debates on item 8b, four nominations were referred and two deferred. And at this session, in 14 cases, the committee did not follow the advisory body recommendation which was represented in the draft decision. In this way, one referral became inscription, one deferral became referral, seven deferrals became inscriptions, four non-inscription became referral, and one non-inscription became deferral. The committee allocated approximately 22 hours of the discussion to examine 33 nominations, which is about 40 minutes for each nomination. And as a result of the decision relating to the state of conservation of properties inscribed on the list, and the decision on nomination of properties to the World Heritage List, 
At this session, the committee decided to inscribe two properties on the list of World Heritage in Danger, Historic Center of Vienna in Austria and the Hebron Al Khalil Old Town in Palestine. At the same time, three properties were removed from the list of the World Heritage in Danger. The Bagrati and Cathedral and Gelati Monastery from Georgia, which has become now Gelati Monastery, and Komoe National Park, Cote d'Ivoire, and Simeon National Park, Ethiopia. So according to this decision, there are now 54 properties inscribed on the list of World Heritage in Danger. Draft decision 41 com 8C1 and 8C2 is on page one of your document 8C and 41 com 8C3 is on page three of the same document. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Balsamo. And now uh, I invite Dr. Resler to take the floor on this map. The floor is yours. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Um, as Secretary of this Convention, I feel I need to inform you about the consequences of these decisions in terms of workload, both for the Center, the advisory body, bodies, and this committee. So you had um, uh, 10 inscriptions um, which did not come from recommendation for inscription but from deferral and referral. It means you have 10 um, provisional statements of outstanding universal value which need to be reviewed by the advisory bodies and coordinated by the center. And you have also requested six additional state of conservation reports emerging from those decisions. So uh, these 10 additional state um, uh, SOUVs, so uh, provisional uh, statements of outstanding universal value, come in addition to three pending ones which have not been finalized uh, from India, um, Iraq, and uh, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, and uh, Uzbekistan. So. Um, you have the workload in terms of the statements of outstanding universal value, but you have also the workload, the growing workload uh, in terms of state of conservation. This year, as you know, we have reviewed 154 state, um, state of conservation reports. Um, for next year, we have 169 state of conservation reports. Um, including 19 from past decisions on nominations. And that often comes from nominations which were inscribed in a hasty way and which had no management plan or other uh, problems. So I wish in this regard remind you that you have taken a decision in Bonn um, at, uh, in 2015, uh, which is decision 39 COM 15, which was under the budget, um, where you, um, uh, and I read it out to you, where you took a decision on how many state of conservation reports should come to this committee. So you said, taking note of the emphasis placed by the World Heritage Committee on conservation and management, which are top priorities, and considering that the actual stand of expenses budgeting that does not reflect this prioritization, recommends that the World Heritage Center in its implementation of the budget gives priority to conservation and monitoring activities, and therefore calls for increasing the proportion of the World Heritage Fund dedicated to conservation, and decides to keep the number of 150 SOC reports 150 state of conservation reports per year. So from our calculation, you have now 19 more reports than you have decided um, uh, in Bonn, which we should present to the World Heritage Committee. So Mr. Chair, I just feel it's important that you are fully aware in terms of workload, which comes to the center, the advisory bodies, but also to you, the World Heritage Committee. Thank you very much. Thank you. Are there any comments or questions on this very issue? I see the United Republic of Tanzania. The floor is yours. Thank you, Chairperson. It is obvious to us that a sizable number of properties have been on the way that are in danger. World Heritage in Danger list for 
some for 20 years or more, uh, for various reasons. They are discussed regularly by the committee, but their respective decisions remain more or less similar, except for minor amendments. The point in case, Mr. Chairperson, is that the causative factors that compel these properties to danger listing, and here I have to mention wars and civil unrests, have remained also more or less the same um, as, as for the time they were inscribed um, in danger. Our view is that there is a need to reconsider the time factor in the way these sites are treated as they remain in danger listing. After such a protracted duration on the danger list and without sufficient improvement to warrant their removal, can we confidently consider their OUV to be intact? We propose, uh, Mr. Chair, a new reflection on this undesirable uh, scenario um, so that uh, we consider uh, a better way of treating them. Thank you very much. Thank you. Lebanon, the floor is yours. Euh, merci, Monsieur le Président. Oui, effectivement, à Bonn, nous avions parlé de 150 states of conservation. Sauf que l'année passée, nous avons inscrit tous les sites du Yémen, sur la de, de la Libye, sur la liste du patrimoine en danger. Cette année, nous avons... Bon, ce n'est pas notre faute, je veux dire. Il se trouve que le monde est comme ça. Et donc, il faut suivre. On ne peut pas faire autrement. Il faut suivre ce qui arrive dans le monde. C'est malheureux, mais euh, euh, à partir du moment où le patrimoine devient de plus en plus menacé, nous sommes obligés d'avoir des états de conservation de plus en plus nombreux. Et il faut qu'on s'adapte à cela. Merci. Portugal, Excellency, the floor is yours. Uh, oui, Monsieur le Président. Uh, uh, on the same line, uh, unfortunately, these things are what they are. They're not what we want them to be. Uh, and uh, it is true. But, but beyond, I must say, adding to what my good friend has just said, that uh, sometimes uh, certain properties are left lingering due to our enormous generosity uh, because we, 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 you know, it's a kind of... of uh, kind service we pay and we say okay let's another year and then another year and then another year yes i think now um uh, blague à part as you say in french uh, uh, there are properties which unfortunately for, for very objective reasons still have to carry on in the list we are not going to take palmyra off the, the it's absurd so so uh, uh so uh we're not going to take the the, the, the parks in the Congo out of the, 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 the list. It, it would be absurd. So uh, these are the realities with which we have to live with. Perhaps one could streamline some of the others, but that is for a collective. The responsibility is of this committee. It's no one else's. So uh, when raising the point, one must be conscious that member states participate in this systematic adjournment of some of this, I think. Thank you. So the floor goes now to Dr. Resla. Thank you very much. Uh, I find this debate very important because it's absolutely clear that it is this committee to take the responsibility. But I have also taken on board the uh, comments made by the delegates from uh, Tanzania because I think it's important that we continue this reflection. And at the previous decision, Mr. Chair, we also have um, adopted a paragraph which relates uh, to this point on danger listing. Uh, so um, we would be very happy to, do, to continue these debates with you. Thank you. Thank you. Angola, the floor is yours. I'm sorry. 
Merci, Monsieur le Président. Donc, j'ai suivi avec attention le, les différentes interventions. Oui, c'est vrai, il y a, il y a des de situations où euh, c'est des faits concrets. Il faut garder les, les, les biens sur la liste du patrimoine mondial en péril. Mais il y a d'autres situations qui méritent d'être vérifiées. Donc, cette réflexion doit être faite parce qu'il y a des sites qui peuvent sortir de la liste du patrimoine mondial en péril. Donc, on a besoin de faire euh, cette réflexion. Je vous remercie. Thank you. I use the end. The floor is yours. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, I think the point made by Tanzania is a, is a good one. I just want to note that the matter of um, a stronger approach to support sites on the danger list is um, something that came, uh, was considered partly in the discussions on the ad hoc working group, and there is um, a proposal for a more active approach uh, on the Convention's requirements for costed action plans for sites on the danger list that will be put forward in the budget decision tomorrow. Um, so it might also be a, important just to note that that, that will be um, a concrete proposal and that's in line with uh, one point that IUCN has been advocating. There are, there are certainly a range of sites where it's hard to see the intervention because of the difficulties with um, conflict situations, but there are a number of sites on the danger list where uh, a more purposeful um, set of uh, actions through through the convention could be realized if we took a more active approach and so action plans in that regard is something we think could help and that should be capable of discussion under item 14 tomorrow mr chair thank you, thank you. philippines the floor is yours sir thank you mr chairperson um yes just to join uh this conversation and we took very good note of uh the statement made by the distinguished colleague from Tanzania. And we do share this, this view that also, as mentioned by IUCN previously, that uh, danger listing should have a more action-oriented approach and a long-term goal. And that goal would be to increase conservation in, a, in a, a certain time span and have actions and be a, a catalyst for support. And that, but that support should be much more tangible and, and concrete. So in, in the budget uh, ad hoc working group, we have discussed this, and there is a proposal, uh, particularly paragraph 36 in our draft decision, which we will consider tomorrow, which is trying to move in this direction where, um, where um, sites on the danger list can try to access financing and support uh, by preparing costed action plans, which can be reported back to the committee. And the committee, when looking at item seven, could, could take note of these action plans and, again, the, try to put in place a momentum where the sites on the danger list are being reinforced and that there is a, uh, let's say, a light at the end of the tunnel after all the work that we do here and we don't just uh, adopt the same decisions year after year. Thank you. As we are discussing the danger listing and we have missed under item 7B one under seven, uh, one uh, NGO representative wishing to take the floor. And as we declared in our decision a couple of minutes ago, that we are very sensitive concerning the relation between heritage and society. Let me please now to compensate this deficit of voices from NGOs and let the distinguished representative of NGO take a short to take a floor with a short intervention on as I understand climate change which is very much in the spirit of this very point we are just discussing. Madam if you could kindly introduce yourself you have two minutes. The floor is yours. You are on. Thank, thank you very much, Chair. I very much appreciate it. Um, the Chair and Committee members, my name is Imogen Zethoven and I represent the Australian Marine Conservation Society. Although my organisation is focused on the Great Barrier Reef, we are concerned about the survival of all World Heritage Coral Reefs. I commend the work of UNESCO and the World Heritage Centre for publishing the first global scientific assessment of the impacts of climate change on World Heritage Coral Reefs. 
the report shows that many of the 29 World Heritage Reefs are already in serious trouble. During the recent global bleaching event, five World Heritage properties suffered severe coral bleaching and mortality. The assessment shows that the outlook for coral World Heritage sites is grim unless we take urgent and decisive action to significantly reduce global carbon emissions. If we remain on our current emissions trajectory in the next two decades, 25 out of the 29 World Heritage Sites will suffer severe stress twice a decade, a rate from which they will be unable to recover. By 2040, the loss of outstanding universal value in these 25 properties will be catastrophic. We could all witness this in our lifetimes. I therefore strongly welcome the decision by the committee to urge countries to undertake the most ambitious implementation of the Paris Agreement. However, this means limiting global temperature rise to no more than 1.5 degrees C by the end of the century, based on pre-industrial levels. Even at 1.5 degrees C, corals will be lost. However, we might have a chance to retain the ecological and biological processes of these magnificent World Heritage Properties. Thank you for providing, providing guidance on this matter. Thank you, madam. Thank you. And now, dear colleagues, uh, I would like to conclude uh, this very discussion and this very item uh, tailing toward the decision. But firstly, I shall ask the rapporteur if there is any amendment. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We don't have an amendment on this item. Thank you. If so, I have the pleasure to declare decisions 421.com 8C.1, C.2, and C.3 adopted. And I also declare item 8C closed, which means that we are almost finished as today's program and agenda are concerned, but of course now it's time for Madame Tocharova and the announcements, announcements, announcements. The floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, you will see the two side events on the screens in front of you. Uh, there are two events, side events for tonight, uh, one starting at uh, 6.30. Um, and called Gyeongju, your next destination, organized by the Organization of World Heritage Cities and the Korean Culture Center in Warsaw. And at 1840, you have another event organized by uh, Li Li Lithuania and the Kaunas um, City Municipal Authorities and the Architecture Festival. Down as 1919, 1939, the capital inspired by the modern movement. These are all side events for the evening, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much. Thank you. And thank you all, ladies and gentlemen, for your essential support for this very long Monday. I declare this very session closed. And I hope that we shall see tomorrow at 9.30 sharp again to continue. Thank you.